Alright, what's up guys, it's Jay Cool. Today I'm going to be making a Super Monkey Ball 2 story mode tutorial. This tutorial actually applies to pretty much anywhere in the game, but I'm going to specifically go through the stages in story mode and, you know, all the strats and stuff you can do. You know, slower, easy ones, and then, you know, the faster, more difficult ones. So, and yeah, this video is going to be kind of long, but this is the easiest way for me to do this, and someday I might make a shorter video, you know, just to make this a little more convenient, but uh, for right now, this will this will suffice. I guess first I can go through, like, some basics, because there, there definitely are some basics that I should probably cover first. I guess first of all, starting with a story mode run. <coughs> One thing to note is you actually want to wait on the screen, like maybe about like 10 seconds or so, before you actually start a run, because that loading screen right there, that white screen, is way, way, way shorter if you actually wait. And I mean, I'm not sure why that happens, but it happens. So yeah, you're in story mode, and I guess I can go over some of the fundamentals first before I actually like dive into these stages, but uh, I mean, I guess I'll just hop in now. One uh, really important thing I want to cover, so... Before you guys just start hopping in and, you know, watching these strats and just, you know, copying them and going and doing runs, you need to kind of pay attention to some of the smaller details, such as boosting. Because, uh, that's not how you boost. This is how you're supposed to boost on this stage. That's an example of pretty much just an average simple run, although actually it was a little bit slower, but... Something I see other runners do is they'll do this, where they hold up into the walls like this. We call that pro boosting. It's uh, well, ironically, but that's that's uh, that's much slower as you can see. The first run was a 53.75, and that run was a 53.06, which is a lot slower. I mean, I think it's actually even slower than just holding up, which will get me a 53.18. So yeah, as you can see, uh, boosting isn't just boosting when you get down to it. It actually, if you're not doing it correctly, you're li you might even lose time over just holding up, like. See there, I got a little lucky, still still managed to save time over holding up, but again, if you boost without ever holding, like, there's no point in your boosting patterns that you should ever be holding directly up. If that makes any sense, because, like, I boost, holding up left, then immediately go to up right, immediately back to up left, and immediately back to up right, and then I can hold up. And see how much faster that is? It gets almost a 54, sometimes you can get a 54. It makes a huge difference. So that is something that you really want to be careful of. I see a lot of new runners who just do the little hold-up strategy of just running into the wall and then holding up. And it's much slower. And I would heavily advise against doing that. So, another thing to cover is, well, pause buffering. Because, I mean, it sounds easy, but you actually got to be doing the right thing on the controller. And I don't actually have a way to do hand cam, but I'll try to explain this the best I can. So obviously, if you just hit the start button over and over, it's uh, it's kind of hard to pause. Let's say one frame at a time. I mean, it's it's pretty much impossible. But if I press the B button and then press the start button, like in quick succession, I can actually one frame buffer, which makes getting pause frames or it's it's still really difficult, but it definitely makes getting certain pause frames way easier. And I mean, obviously, I think you guys, if you guys actually don't know, pause frames allow you to do certain strats that otherwise wouldn't be possible, such as pausing at a 59.91 on simple and holding up will actually save one frame over, doing, <laughs> over holding it up, holding up normally. No, it's actually not faster, but that's a, kind of an example of what I'm talking about. Because if you pause at the same time every time, and then, you know, put in an input, you'll get the same result every time, because this game doesn't actually have R any RNG in the gameplay. It has bad collision detection, but that's another story. So, uh, that's, uh, something to take in consideration when you're pause buffering. You don't always need to use the B button, but when we're trying to do, like, really precise, like, let's say, the frame I'm trying to get right now is 76, and I'm at 78. Well, let's, uh, let's get a new... <laughs> okay, let's say I'm trying to get 86. Let's say I'm trying to get 83. Say I'm trying to get 80. Okay, there we go. That, that's uh, that helps a lot versus, let's say right now I'm trying to get 78 and I just use the pause button only. I'm not even going to be close, like ever. 
but uh, pause buffering is really difficult. You don't need to do like anything weird. Like I have one thumb on the B button and the other one on the joystick. But if I'm moving, like if I'm actually like moving while I'm pause buffering, I just like I guess roll my thumb from the B button onto the start button. It's uh, it it takes some getting used to for sure, but it can uh, get to the point where it's at least pretty easy to get like uh, more simple pause frames like every single time like you'll never miss them because I know back whenever I didn't know how to pause like that it would take me forever to get pause strats and I'm almost made them not even worth it at that point okay so that's uh, another pretty important fundamental those are two of the biggest things besides that just really pay attention to what strats you're trying to pick up and learn on because if you just copy exactly what the runner's doing, most of the time, you're, that, that's a pretty solid way to go about it. And then obviously you want to just keep practicing until you get the strat consistent, because, well, most of these stages can get pretty consistent. And, uh, I mean, yeah, that's the advice I have. This is not an easy game to run at all, but, I mean, once you get down to it and really pay attention and learn and pick up strats, it can get very easy along the way. This game's simple for me now, but when I started, obviously, it was very difficult. And there's another thing I want to cover real quick. This is exclusive to story mode, not challenge mode at all. And that is skipping stages. Even though I'm going to cover every single level in story mode in this video, you actually, there's a, there's a different category known as just story mode. Basically, it, yeah, it's basically the any percent of story mode because you can skip two levels in a world. And, I mean, yeah, that, that's basically all there is to it. You can skip some levels. You can only skip two, though, and the second one you skip has to be the very last stage that you skip in the run. Or in the world. Like, let's say I do all these levels except for level five, that, and, like, I want to skip it. That has to be the last one, if it's my second stage. Because you, you skip two in a row, and you have more stages left, your game's going to crash. And, uh, or if you try to skip... I mean, yeah, I guess that's the only scenario that would happen. But... If you actually exit game and enter back into the game, you can actually skip more than two stages, which is also something to keep in mind. Because in World 7 and 10, that is definitely a, something you want to do. You want to skip more than just two stages, because the stages in those worlds are particularly longer. So, uh, I mean, I guess I can show off how you do this. You just put the cursor over the level you want to skip. Menu down to exit game. Pretty easy stuff. Menu past that, and then pause here. This only works on the NTSC version, by the way. I just want to point that out, because this pause menu only shows up on the NTSC U version, in fact. Not even on the Japanese, just on the American one. And you just want to menu back up to stage select. And, well, that didn't work at all. Okay, hold on. I'll show, I'll show this off. It's because I entered a new file and did not even play a level yet. There's this weird thing where that happens, but... It doesn't really matter because you're never going to need to skip simple anyway. Okay, so now that we're in this, I'm going to do the same thing. Pause, exit game, then you pass this, play points, yeah. And then pause here, hit stage select. And it will skip. Wow, this is, this is awkward, isn't it? Alright. I'm going to do something that I know will work. <laughs> Sorry, for the delay, this is... This is embarrassing. Why am I making a tutorial? No, this is... There's weird things that can happen if you try to do it like that. Like the background that goes white and it doesn't even skip a stage. So let's just play through simple first. Then I'll try to show it off. It, it's pretty easy though, as you can tell. I mean, it's easy to mess up the menuing though, if doing it really fast. But it is still very easy. So just pause exit game. You can do it as early as that. Or even earlier if you can manage it. Stage select. Super easy. Now I skipped hollow, as you can see. Now again, if I skip a second stage, I would crash right now, unless I play through all these and like, let's say this is my last stage, then I skip that, it won't crash. Or better yet, I can exit game completely and just keep mashing through these menus. Everything should be on the right spot. When you uh, actually start a run, you want to make sure it's on file 1 if you're doing the glitched category, so you can just mash through it. And if I do this again, it should skip another stage. And it actually will not crash. It's obviously pretty slow to do that. There's only certain uh, situations you want to do that. If a stage takes longer than, let's say, around 45 seconds, like um, like on the timer, if you get something worse than a 45, 
then you probably want to skip the stage, like just exit game and skip it, because it's more worth it to do that. Most stages though, at least with the optimal strats, you can beat quicker than that. <clears throat> and obviously you want to skip two stages per world, because you can, so I mean, you might as well use it. And uh, is there anything else I'm missing? Oh yeah, um, something else important to know is like when you start a stage, as soon as you can pause, pausing and hit retry makes the stage loading quicker, and that does save time, and it is recommended because it saves a lot of time over the run. And obviously, as you might have been able to notice, as soon as you break this tape, you gotta wait like one or two frames. If you do it too soon, it actually doesn't work. But most of the time, that won't be an issue. As soon as you pause here, just menu up to stage select, skips the entire um, ending cutscene of the monkey doing it again, like the replay, and then the monkey flying up. It's it saves you a lot of time over the run. <clears throat> Make sure you do those. The menuing does can get a little bit annoying. It can be avoided completely if you play challenge mode, but story mode is also good because you don't have to deal with lives or anything. It's a pretty good place to learn how to start, you know, running this game. And I think those are all the fundamentals I need to cover. If there's more, I can try to add them in later, I guess. Edit the video, or I can add annotations or something if there's like a particular strat I get to and you know there's a new one found or something easier just some incorrect information because this is not a very professional video I'm going to do my best to eventually make a tutorial video that you know wasn't done in one sitting but for now that will have to wait because it's just a lot of work I will I'll try to put that together eventually though or maybe someone else will so yeah, of course you want to wait there. Got a little bit of a worse loading screen there. It happens. So let's get right into the stages. Simple, as I've said before, it's pretty easy. You want to start out with a left frame boost like that, and then you get to about, I don't know, maybe right here. <laughs> you just start turning, and then, well, I don't need to pause this, but you get the idea. You start out with a left frame boost, which a frame boost, by the way, is doing that at the beginning, that and then turning. And then a wall boost is just boosting off the wall. You want to do left frame boost, right wall, left wall, run to the goal. Pretty simple, not much to explain there. Sometimes you get really fast runs, sometimes you get not as fast runs because of random speed bumps on the ground, and sometimes your wall boost, want to point this out now, sometimes you can get some really bad wall boost, sometimes you get really good wall boost, and it's not really in your control. Like, there's no RNG, but like, it's so unpredictable sometimes with the collision. So let's go to hollow. This one's pretty easy. You can boost either way on this stage. I mean most of the time I'll just boost to the right actually, but I don't think it actually matters. All you gotta do is that. It's very simple. I guess I can go on a little more explanation than that. When you boost, you get here. I usually like let go a little bit and then make sure you try to land on the slanted area because if you do that, you'll just roll right in. Versus, I can show you what happens if you actually don't hit that slanted area. Where it's not a big deal, but what can happen is something like that. You'll just bounce up and not finish. So that's pretty important. I'll do one more attempt for you guys. Usually, like, let go a little bit and make the stage. Uh, it's definitely recommended if you actually beat the stage. Let's try that again. Hit the slant, roll in. Pretty simple. Bumpy, this stage is a perfect example of what I said about the collision detection. It's very finicky and unpredictable. I boosted this way at the beginning, by the way. Just boosting right. I mean, uh, sometimes it doesn't matter. Here it doesn't matter. So basically, <laughs> there's not much to explain here. You just, you, yeah, like I said, I boost to the right, you know, left wall, right wall. And then you just want to kind of run at these edges and hope you get good clips. And that was actually really good, but I didn't manage to finish. But it's very unpredictable. I can get anywhere between a 53 and a 50 on this stage. Like, a whole three second window. Because sometimes you just get unpredictable hits, and you just have to kind of try to account for that. But you also want to be safe, too, because you don't want to, you know, fly past the goal and die, because that's also happened. But I always, at the beginning... I mean, this won't make like a huge difference most of the time, but towards the beginning, after I do all that, I try to aim for this area, like, I don't know why, uh, I just feel like that helps. 
And then obviously these little bumps right here can also bounce you up in the air. And I don't know, sometimes that might be able to do something for you, but it's unpredictable. Don't expect to get the same times here every time. And there's really not much to it, it's just, it's unpredictable sometimes. Now we're going to go on to switches. This one's pretty easy. A safe way of doing this at the beginning, you actually could just hold up and press the switch, then start boosting. But that's not, I mean, it, it's a little slower than just frame boosting, but sometimes if you frame boost like I did, and run into the button, you actually won't press the button. But it doesn't happen very often. So anyways, yeah, hold on. I go to the right first, and then left wall, right wall. Just want to make sure I note that out. And then you have two options. You can go to the blue goal, pretty easy, you know, just like that. Or if you want to be risky and save like a second and a half, two, yeah, maybe just a second. Slow down, hit the switch, get the green. You gotta note though, this is story mode, so these goals, <clears throat> the red and green goals, do not actually skip a stage. They do increase your score, but I mean, we're not really, I mean, this is speedrun, the score doesn't really matter. So that's something to note. Those goals do not actually save time, and I mean, unless they're faster, but they don't actually skip stages. <coughs> so there's a lot of cases where you just get the blue goal. But this one, it actually is faster. When you're doing this, you wanna like hit, try to hit like the side of that switch, like where I did, like kind of the diagonal part, because you won't bounce up as high. And then you just gotta try to aim for the green goal. Also, doing it from the side I'm doing it at is way easier, because the goal is actually, it's not completely vertical, I guess. The goal actually is slightly slanted, so going in from this side is easier than going in from the other side. Because that top goal post is farther to the right than the, the bottom one is. So it makes it easier to land that way. <coughs> It's a pretty tricky green goal though for being, you know, the fourth stage. It's not too bad. This one's simple enough. I mean, boosting. I, f I think I've even seen three people three wall this one. Left, right, left, right, left, right. I don't think it matters. It might, but there's some stages where I'm like not really even totally sure what the fastest way is. It doesn't, it doesn't make that much of a difference. I just do it like that. Right, left wall, right wall. It's pretty simple enough. And then you just run at the goal. There's nothing to explain there. <coughs> floaters kind of the same situation actually I've seen people three wall this going right left or right some claiming it's faster I don't really know I mean maybe it's a consistency measure but I usually just do right left wall right wall which I've actually been doing on a lot of stages but all you want to do here is really just avoid these and run of the goal it's pretty simple actually I mean it's like it's world one or something but uh, I actually, sometimes, if I want to feel really risky, I'll try to go for a clip. Maybe try to show it off. Try to get a little quip. 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 No. Try to get a little clip on that stay. Stay. Um, yeah, like that. Except actually a fast one. You can save time from it. I wouldn't recommend it. If you can help it. But, I mean, you get to the point where you're good enough at this game. And you can go for stuff like that and not be, I guess phased out whenever you get something you might not expect then sure you could go for it it just saves a little bit of time because you get a bunch of speed if you get the right clip okay slopes different ways to do this a lot of people mess this up maybe because they don't always go back because if you just boost hit the wall and go for it there's a good chance you're not gonna make that platform so what I do is beginning go back left like that then left wall right wall then go for it and usually I'll get it almost every single time uh, I mean it, it's very easy the farther you go back the easier it'll be to some extent actually this might even be slower still made it though I mean you could be really safe and go like farther back I guess I don't know I, I don't think you need to the way I did it's pretty easy and it, you definitely want to just get used to doing it like that it's the way I still do it you still definitely want to go back it, uh, in challenge mode, you actually can make it without going back sometimes, or a decent number amount of the times, but uh, it's uh, story mode, it's actually even harder, because the walls aren't the same. But yeah, so you can make it doing this, it's just very unlikely and not recommended. So I'm going to go back to it one more time. That's 
let's go to sliders. This is one that people see and they're like, wow, dude, that, that was crazy. No, it's really not that hard. All you gotta do is right frame boost here and then hit this left wall, but try to not land on the stage again. Like just hit the wall and then land right onto the slider and then roll like so and not bounce on the wall. It's recommended to not do that. And then you wanna just Try to go around here, like you see that banana over there, just be a little bit to the left of the banana and try to roll off like that. And then just aim for the goal. It's pretty easy to hit actually, at least in comparison to other falling stages. This one's very simple. There's multiple ways you can do it. This is the way I do it. It's the way I recommend, however, you could also go like that and then roll off of this gets a higher, much higher roll and maybe gives you more time to set up for trying to get into the goal. But it's not like that much easier. I would just recommend doing it like this. Get a bit of a lower roll sometimes. And it's not hard to land as you can see. It's pretty easy. It might take some getting used to at first for sure. Like it might be kind of difficult. But once you get it down it becomes second nature. It's, it's pretty easy. So spinning top, most people actually boost <coughs> to the left at the beginning here, and then right wall, left wall, and go up this side. And then what you do here is make sure when you run up here, you're going to the left of the spinning top, and run to the goal. Pretty easy. But the way I do it, I actually boost to the right at the beginning, left wall, right wall, and go up like that, and then continue running, because since I have to go on the side anyway, I don't have to completely stop. It doesn't really make much of a difference, but that's just something I thought I'd point out. That's what I'd do. It's very simple. There's no need to even go back into that. This stage, there is a first cycle and a second cycle. I don't expect any of you to just pick up the game and start getting first cycle every time. It's not easy. I'm going to point out, I did right wall here. Right, right wall, right, right, frame boost, left wall, right wall. And then, I mean, if you're just learning it, just take your time. Like, go kind of little fast but not really that fast just don't die this isn't a stage you want to try to go for that fast cycle and then mess up and die it's not worth it once you once you get better you'll be able to get it down it is 10 seconds but trust me the rest of the run if you're just picking this game up it's not gonna be much of a difference whether you do the strat or not so again I wouldn't worry about it go right that one this is 24 actually that was a little early Maybe go at like a mid-24. But if you do, if you are trying to get that first cycle, what you're going to want to do, pretty much need to do, is for these corners, just, you know, try to take the turns as tight as possible. You don't actually have to grind those edges. But these edges, you at least want to try to do it maybe a little bit, like, like that or something. But even if you don't do that, if you just manage to get a nice grind on this one, like a really nice one, you can make it without grinding anything else. It's not easy, but it is possible. But yeah, don't be uh, disappointed if you actually miss that first cycle. I can even miss it sometimes. It's not the easiest in the world. It's actually easier in challenge mode. So, alright, we're in world 2 finally. Get to some advanced stages. So here you're going to want a right frame boost, left wall. It uh, actually is a little bit faster to do the other way, but the way I'm doing it is way more consistent. I feel like because the angle, if you do it this way, can be a little awkward. And you can make it, but sometimes, there's a, sometimes you just don't. So yeah, like I said, do this. And what you want to look for here is about right here. I guess when like the stage starts slanting down, is when you actually want to try to land on the other side, I guess. And then you just run at the goal. It, it's not that hard. I, I hope you don't have too much trouble with this. But, uh, it, it's not too bad. Okay, Eaton Floor. The fast right here actually could be pretty difficult for some new runners. So, I mean, so yeah, right frame, Bruce, left wall. I don't know, actually. What would you do if you're trying to pick this game up? I'm trying to think of a strat you could possibly do. Like, just kind of run through these holes, I guess. Like, that route I did actually right there wasn't that hard. It wasn't even that slow either. It kind of was, but. Just, I guess, if you're not safe going on the edge, try to find a safe route to go. 
Otherwise, if you're ready to do the fast strat, what you're gonna do is obviously that same beginning and run along this edge right here. And then just run into the goal. And it can be a little tricky because I'll actually point out a certain spot that makes this pretty tricky is right here, you're technically not even running over anything. It, there's a little gap, and you can actually clip on that sometimes and mess up. And it's just, there's some thin parts. It's it's not very easy. And there's even a faster strat that I don't even do most of the time. But you can clip off of this and clip off of, well, that's why I don't do it every time. The collision is the most consistent. But you basically clip off of that and clip off of that. And it saves even more time, but that's very, very risky. I would not recommend it. I don't even do it the majority of the time, but it is a strat that exists, so I thought I'd point it out. But this strat is the one I've done for the most part. And it's it's, it's pretty good. Okay, so hoppers. You want to be really safe here. You can, as soon as the stage starts, wait until the ball bounces up and lands back on the stage, and then just hold up. And you'll beat the stage every time. You could even go a little sooner than that, probably. Well, that was pretty soon, but... But you want to do the fast strat, you want a left frame boost. Ooh, switching things up a little bit. Right wall, and then do that. You just go. Not too hard. You can actually do it the other way, but I, I think... Yeah, you should be able to. Yeah. But I do it. Left frame boost, right wall. And, yeah, you just straighten yourself out and run at the goal. It's pretty simple coaster. Okay, there's another few strats you could do here. I'm just going to show out the easiest one first. Just jump off the stage and try to aim for, you know, the stage. Like, the big, long, flat part of the stage. Just try to bounce on it. <coughs> it's not too hard to hit. It's pretty big. And then, when you start bouncing the second time, start moving forward and just finish. Like that. You could even, you know, boost a little bit here and then try to do it like this, and I have my joystick actually directly left. Once I get in this spot, I just have it directly left. And just hold it like this. And just finish. That's a bit slower, as you can see, and it's really not even, like, that hard to just do this. It's not too difficult. Just practice your falling, I guess, and land on that. It's not even precise. Again, when you land the second time, start going forward. Assuming that you actually were close to the slide. And then here's another bit of a faster strat that I was doing for a while until I found an even faster one. You bounce once and then you can risk it. And I got a glitch goal there, but you can risk it and try to land directly in. Not recommended, but it does save some time. Thought I'd show it off, but here's the pause frame strat. This is the one I currently do. Where I guess it's the first pause frame you've gotten to in the room. But if you want to do this, it actually does save like six or seven seconds. But it is easy to mess up. There's only two frames that work. And they are 60 and 58. And I guess I'm showing 58 first. It's the weird one. You just want to let go. And then at about, about this point right here, 56, 0, 59x. Or 55.9x. You just start up, up left for a little bit straight for a little bit, and then up left again. And I actually, I mean, it's probably because I keep pause buffering, but it's really weird. This is the the harder of the two frames. The 60 frame, trust me, it's way easier than this. I'm going to try to get 58 again and show it off. It's, it's the weird one. It's the one you don't want to get, but it will work. That's how you do it. I'll actually try to show that again, because the way I showed it slowed down was pretty bad. So again, about right, maybe here. Hold up right for like 0.2 or something, then hold up again for like another 0.2 or 3. And then try to finish. It's really weird. Uh, if you can get 0.60, get 0.60. <laughs> this is a strat that definitely takes some getting used to. I mess it up a decent amount if I get 58. Just try to copy what I did. It's easier for me to do it when I'm not pausing it. So let's get 60. This is this is the recommended frame. Obviously, if you get 58, I mean, you could just pause and retry, but I, I would still go for it if you're comfortable with it. But this is the easy one. 68, you want to... I think some of these frames actually work if you just pause and hold up. Yes, they do, even though that didn't work. 
So if you wanted to use a second frame here, it's pr I mean, at that point you're kind of pausing a lot, and some people don't want to do that. But if you pause anywhere between like 0.46 and like one or something like that, and just hold up here, you will finish the stage. Pretty cool, but that's not what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do it the faster way because it's not that hard. At about a middle of 56, like a 56.5 something. Like obviously you're not gonna pause here, neither for the other frame, but like you start holding up. And then kind of just adjusting and trying to get in it. It's not that hard. It's not a precise adjustment. Just kind of pay attention to where the goal's at. If you're not used to these kind of strats, I guess, like, you know, flying at the goal and you don't know how to adjust properly, just practice. It's, it's not... It's something you can get used to pretty quick. It is not... I mean, it, it's used a lot in the run, so it's something you definitely want to learn. You know, how to actually, like, fall and fall into the goal, because there's some stages where the whole premise of the stage is falling into the goal. Anyways, that's enough of Coaster. There was a lot to that. Let's get to an easier stage. This one's weird. There's a couple things you can do. You can, like, just go over here and then just go to the side. <clears throat> that's probably the easiest, safest way to do it. It's kind of, like, bumpy, so it's inconsistent. Or you could... Actually, does frame boosting help? Nah, you really could just wall boost without even frame boosting, and it'd be fine. Or you can do what I do, which is frame boost, but then kind of try to stay on the edge here. Again, you want to aim for these edges. And then, if you do that correctly, you can go through the middle and not do that at the end. The typical collision I get here, I actually do get more consistent here than I do at Bumpy. And that's the bounces I usually get. And I can get a 54. Really fast, obviously. But it's tricky. And if you can't do it, it's not a big deal. I didn't do it for a while. It's tr it's a hard one. I would recommend just boosting like that and just going to the side. You can go to the other side too if you want. It doesn't really make a difference. But it does lose a few seconds. Swell is uh, it's harder than it looks. No, actually, you can mess this one up pretty easy. But you just want a left frame boost, right wall. Just kind of run at it. I stay on the lower parts of, like, whenever it uh, slants to the left, I stay on the lower side. If it goes to the right, go to the lower side. And you get about here, pull back. I highly recommend it. Pull back. Because sometimes the stage is really bumpy. And you can bump into the, the party ball or whatever and actually not finish. Like, pull back. You don't want to bonk and die. Because it's a stupid stage to die on. So you don't want to do that. Just pull back. That's my tip for that stage. Okay, there's actually two different ways to do this one. What you're going to start here is just do a right wall, then a left wall. And if you get really good collision on your left wall, I would suggest hitting that ramp. And trying to swivel a little bit in the air if you can. I mean, it doesn't really make you go faster, but it gives you more air time, which I guess maybe helps. See, that was a slow run. I'll try to show off a fast one if I can get a fast wall. This one should be quick. And if you do it really good, you can actually get like a 47. Okay, well that was like an average run. But the easier, I mean, uh, more consistent strat is to do the same thing at the beginning, then skip that ramp, and like, I just want to say like maybe like a half a second to a, like three quarters of a second before you hit the second ramp, just let go of the joystick, and then go. And then just try to finish. Try to bounce once, twice, finish. You want to bounce twice before you finish. And it is, it's the strat you use in challenge mode, because I guess the beginning's a little slower, so you can't do that faster strat ever. Or, not very often. But yeah, it's pretty easy. You just try to adjust so you only end up bouncing like twice. And finishing, you'll get a low 46, high 45 if you do it right. But uh, the reason I want you to let go before you hit the platforms, because you actually don't let go, you get more unnecessary air time. And it actually makes the strat a decent bit slower. And some energy can mess it up. But yeah, that first ramp is the faster strat. Sometimes, though, a lot of the time, it doesn't even end up saving time. Unless you get a really, really good wall boost at the beginning. And you feel like, oh yeah, I should probably do it, because I'm going to have a lot of uh, speed. Otherwise, just do it like that, you know? Go on the ramp, let go. Actually, yeah, you let go before the ramp, and you're not even moving forward when you hit the ramp, either. Like, I let go. And then I'm still, like, not even holding the joystick for, like, another second, almost. 
and then I start going. And then just, yeah, it's not too bad. This one gave me a lot of trouble when I was starting out with it. <clears throat> so let's go through this. You can boost, you can wall boost, you can frame boost, you can just hold up. It doesn't really matter. Because you're going to be early for the cycle if you boost really well anyway. What you want to do is like go here, and then you turn, and then that's going to happen. And you want to try to land in the goal. I actually, I normally boost at the beginning. I've just frame boost like that. Go here and kind of turn like I do. Just turn, and then run at the goal. Try to land on the tape. It's really a lot faster to do that strat than doing it normally, so I would recommend it. But it can be tricky. Doing the beginning isn't always the exact same. You know, you just want to hold back right and then start going for it. But sometimes you can be early or late. Like that time I was a little early but still made it. But that one can definitely take some getting used to because you don't always get the same rolls off of that, um, I guess, that inchworm. And sometimes you go too high, too low, whatever. It's, it's not too bad, though, once you get used to it. Most strats aren't too bad once you get used to it, believe it or not. This one's super easy. Something you actually don't do in many stages, at least yet. Well, you actually do later on, but we haven't done much yet. Is you actually hold up at the beginning for consistency. The reason it's better than boosting is because it makes the strat that we're going to do a lot more consistent. Which comes up a lot more later in the run. So we're going to hold up here. And then at like a mid-57. What was that? Was that about a mid-57? Go up right a little bit. Swivel between those. And then just keep going forward till you get to the goal. It's very simple. I guarantee you, give this a couple tries, you'll already get it down. But it's an easy strat, it allows you to run through the whole stage at a pretty brisk pace. Now there is, of course, a pause strat. A pause strat. Or if you pause at point 73, hold up left, <coughs> you get a clip. And then about right here, you just kind of hold up and adjust and saves like a second and a half. It's not recommended unless you, you know, you're feeling really confident. You can also do it 71 if you let go, then start moving forward, but it's more risky. But it can be done. 73 is the best frame to get it on though. 71 is more of just a backup, like it's not recommended. You don't want to go for that one. But again, I wouldn't even, I would not advise to, to using this strat. Unless you probably you probably have a really good time if you're going for this strat. You just don't need to otherwise. It's the same thing with coaster. You don't really need to do like most of these pause strats unless you're going for a really, really fast time. It's just not recommend like I wouldn't recommend it at all. Cause they're so easy to mess up. Like especially like point seventy one, you gotta let go, then bounce on here, then bounce on all those, and still land in the goal. Like it, it's a little complicated and it only saves like a second and a half. It's not very much. That's assuming you have good pausing. Coaster at least saved like several seconds, so if you can get that down, it's a cool strat to do. But at the same time, it's still not something, it's not required. You can lose like up to 6, you know, 10, even 20 seconds on a stage if it means you can beat it every single time. I would just, just take the consistency, man. This game is hard. If you can get past the game, you can start doing it faster and faster from that point on. But if you're still having trouble just finishing the run, I mean, you know, you gotta finish the run. So, yeah, that was simple enough. This stage is pretty simple. I do left boost, right wall, bounce once, and I try to land on that pause switch. Now, there is a way to do it without, and it's not actually that much slower, but we need the pause switch. These things are going to move pretty quick. I go to this one, then go to this one. I never stay on the middle ones. I wouldn't recommend doing that. <laughs> As I said, I wouldn't recommend a lot of things. But it's pretty quick. You actually can do it without pressing the switch, and if you do that, you can make this earlier cycle. You can actually make the fast cycle on the switch too, but it's very hard. And, you know, I, I would never go for it. But if you want to be safe and consistent, you could do this. It loses like, I don't know, like two seconds. It's actually not that much. Or again, you can try to bounce, land on that switch. And that's the way I do it. You run to the corners then wait for that straight now go to this corner and then just finish simple enough and that is world 2 this video is already almost at 40 minutes this is gonna be a long tutorial all right organic farm this one things uh, can get pretty difficult sometimes if you you want to right frame boost left wall right wall 
what you want to try to do here is get a high hit from that. That way you can kind of skip a lot of the level and land closer to the end. And honestly to be safe I would recommend just slowing down a ton by the time you actually get to the end. I mean obviously you can just do it going, oh, stuff like that can happen. So you gotta be careful not to hit those edges. But you can finish going full speed and it is obviously faster but it is really inconsistent sometimes like you want to definitely slow down and take the ending as safe as you can versus you know risking it all and dying because obviously dying is always slower than doing a slow strat like so I don't even expect you to necessarily get it that fast either and you don't have to hit get that thing to hit you up either like if I don't and just run through it it's actually safer this way it's just a decent bit slower and the ending can get kind of tricky if you don't get there quick enough because it gets on a weird cycle. But yeah, that one can be finicky sometimes. This one, something fun I do, I just get on the wall and then go down. You don't actually have to do that. I do it because I can drop down early and set up. But pretty much right when it changes to 52, you're going to want to back right and then up right. And well, actually that wasn't right at all. Okay, so I could you just boost any way you want to here. Get to the end get to this corner of the stage, right when it changes to 52, back right, then up right, and then just up left into the goal. It's not very hard, but you can mess it up sometimes. But once you get it down, the timing and everything, it's seriously, it's super easy. Which is good, because, you know, that stage can be pretty tricky if you don't know how to do it. So yeah, this one, tiny, I do a tiny frame boost to the right. You really don't even need a frame boost at all, but I do. And you can do left wall, right wall, and then kind of straighten out here. So I stay on this side and move over. It doesn't really matter, I guess. You can do it, be on the other side. And then you just want to bounce, bounce, bounce. And then try to skip to the goal if you can. You don't have to. You can actually take the ending a lot safer than that. It loses maybe like a second. Where I'm going to do the same thing, I do the ending safe. You just bounce, you know, bounce, 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 make sure you don't land on the holes. And then take the ending a little safer. But it does lose a little bit of time. But if you can maintain at least a decent amount of speed going down this, and you want to try to bounce directly to the goal at the end. Oh, yeah, you don't want to do that, obviously. Be careful, you're only bouncing one time on every platform. I think, like, usually I'll bounce on one of the platforms twice. But other than that, I actually do bounce on one of those platforms twice usually. But yeah, just be aware of when you're going to bounce and when you're not going to bounce, I guess, because that can make a difference. If you get to that second to last platform, bounce on the edge of it and then just miss the last one because you, you were in the area for too long. But no, it's not too bad. I hope this tutorial is actually effective right now. <laughs> kind of rushing through these. Okay, here, you don't want to use a pause frame, I don't know why you wouldn't, but you can go back, press the play button, maybe boost, and you just kind of run through the stage, like normal, at a brisk pace. But even at this, this is pretty slow. Okay. Um, okay. I have no comment on that. So, yeah, press the play button, if you don't want to use the pause strat, that is this is the easy way of doing it. It's much slower. It is much, much slower. Also, I guess that first cycle I was trying to beat isn't that easy to beat. You don't have to rush through it this fast, but the stage is pretty self-explanatory. There's no tricks to it. I'm literally just beating it fast. Yes, he barely even got above 30 seconds. You can also do the same thing without even pressing play. You can just do it on fast forward. But at this point, this gets so difficult, there's no real point in even doing it. You might as well just do the pause strat, but I'll, again, I guess I'll just show it off anyway. And this is kind of slow. I, you can do it a lot faster than this. But I mean, I'm not used to doing the strat, because I just do the pause strat. It's so much quicker. And this, even if you go too slow, it can be slower than pressing the play button, as you just saw. Anyway. If you don't want to mess with the pause strat, that's what you do. Otherwise, you're going to want to hold up until point 18 or 16. They both do almost the same thing. 
and then you're gonna want to hold up right and as soon wait no no you don't don't listen to me I don't know what I'm talking about dude you don't hold up right you hold back right let's try to do that again back right as soon as you get that bounce as soon as you're up in the air you don't want to flick the joystick over to up left and try to land I guess around just close to the middle but still like on the right side of this dribble so you actually get like a bounce over to the right and then try to land on this so that one is actually kind of difficult and it can take a while to get used to but like I said it is a lot it's a lot faster it saves a lot of time actually going the normal way it saves like yeah I want to say at least 10 15 seconds closer to the 15 actually if you do the normal way pretty slow because I guess there's not really a way to do this slow. As you can see, if you can make that consistent, you can get a very high 49 most of the time. You actually can land straight in the goal, but it's not easy, and I wouldn't recommend it. But yeah, you just go here, and then just bounce twice. It's, But yeah, if you can't do it, do the normal way. It's not that bad. But if you can get to the point where you can start doing this consistently, this is an amazing strat. And plus, it just looks so cool, dude. Like, people see that and they're like, wow, wee, that was crazy. I mean, why would you not want to do it? Yeah, and then I guess I get up here and like I try to get as far up that dribble as I can. So I can get an easier angle to land here. But that's basically how you do it. URL. This is a pretty nice plug-in uh, advertising from Amusement Vision. But I actually three wall here, left wall, right wall, left wall. And at the end of this left wall is where you actually want to hit it the third time. So that you can get over that little wall, I guess, and land onto the stage. And just roll in. It's pretty important to note that because if you just left wall, right wall, left wall, without waiting for the end, it doesn't always work out for you. So, left wall, right wall and then try to hit the end of this left wall. And the reason I don't just frame boost instead is because sometimes you can get inconsistent wall boosts and you won't actually be able to hit that left wall. Because sometimes I'll get a, a, a wall boost on that right wall that's so weird, I won't even, I mean, I won't even have to like adjust. I'll, I'll just go for the left wall and I'll just hit it at the end. And like sometimes there, like, like that. Like still, sometimes you can not make that, but you definitely want to try to. I guess I could show like a little backup if you don't get this. Cause let's say, oh no, I messed it up, and now I'm here. I think you can try to do is try to run along these quick as you can, and then when it comes back, sit here instead of going in there. Instead of like going into this area, like that I'm in, you can actually you can seriously just sit on these edges on any of them where the bananas are, and it will not hit you. But yeah, hopefully you don't mess that up. This stage, easy, easy peasy. You just, easy way to do it is just, you know, boost, slow down, go in the goal so you don't bunk. The way I do it is I actually go over here to the right, go about right here just so I don't get a random bump off the edge of the stage. Because as you might have been able to tell, you get some random bumps off the edge of the, edge of the stage sometimes. It makes things a little inconsistent. So I go over here, bounce once, kind of go to the side of this platform then finish. The reason I do that, because I don't actually have to slow down as much and I can get a fast finish. Versus, I'll show you what it's like when you don't do that. Well, let's finish <laughs> this time. <laughs> Instead, if you bounce twice on this platform, you want to do that and it just loses, you know, like just half a second at most. There is actually even another way you can do this that is actually faster than both ways, if you can manage to pull it off. And that is not how you go about it. You can actually manage to do it without even going off to the side and slowing down at all. But it's very difficult, because most of the time you want to bounce on that goal platform at least once. That distance is not easy to make. So again, just... I would do this. Go off to the bounce once, go off to the side, finish. And if that's too tricky for you, just slow down. It doesn't even lose a, like, a full second. And again, you want to go for the blue goal there. Not the other goals. <clears throat> that wasn't obvious enough. Okay, so here. You have a few options. Obviously, because it's curvy options. So, 
That's not the right way. If you want to boost, I'm going to boost the left first. Right wall, left wall. And then you can just take this fat path. It's very easy. You can just run along it. And you finish in the goal. Now, the strat most people did, or at least for a while, I don't know if they still do, but you can just do this. Go on the second fattest path, because it's still not that hard to do. And when you do it, you can end up just running straight into the goal. It's kind of nice. The way, thing I do, hold up at the beginning. This is for consistency. And this strat can be a little tricky. As soon as you get off the platform, go up left for just a tiny bit. Like, maybe like 0.2 or something, and then just hold up again. Bounce onto the fat platform, then finish the stage. As you can see, you can get high 49s, 50s, high, low 50s if you do it right. And, well, a 50 is pretty fast, so. You don't have to do this. It can be a little tricky. You can also boost <coughs> doing the same strat, and it's obviously faster, but it's less consistent. But I found this, this setup is very easy. And again, you don't want to do that. A strat a lot of other people do is seriously they'll just boost and just do the second fattest path. It doesn't involve doing any clips of any kind. And it's only like not even a full second slower if you do it really quick. So it's whatever setup you prefer. The one I do is the quicker one, but it could be a little harder for you because it does involve a clip. So Twister. Alright, I think here I'm going to right wall. Yeah, right wall. Right boost. Right frame boost. Left wall, right wall. And then, about right at this point of the stage, you know, it's going to start breaking apart. Want to get a clip and try to land on the goal platform if you can help it. So better wall boost here can really help you out. Try to stay, I guess, over kind of in the middle a little bit so you can get like a lower clip. Like that was faster. But uh, you pretty much just run through it and make sure that doesn't happen. You can do a smaller frame boost to assure that doesn't happen. But just try to clip. Again, you can't really help it. Sometimes you'll get really unlucky and you'll run over all of them and not clip at all. And there's really nothing you can do in that situation. Like, let's say, yeah, like that. I mean, what do you do? And that's because I, like, try to stay over to the side to kind of show you what would happen. Otherwise, you stay closer to this side, you're more likely to get a clip, but it will be higher. So, I mean, it's all up to you what you want to go for. But that's pretty much all there is to it. Run through. And that was weird. Some weird things can happen. But there pretty much is no other way to go about the stage. Just run through it. And then finish. Okay, here, you definitely have a few options. So, first option, you know, boost whatever way you want. Get down to it. Go down, I think, three stairs. And fall here. This is a pretty safe way I used to do a long time ago. And you can just roll right in. I think, yeah, it's three, you go down three stairs. Three stairs. One, two, three. And then fall at the top of that stair, and you will land right here. So I guess you could do it at the bottom of the second stair as well. That's a pretty way, easy way to skip all the level. You can do stuff a little more tricky than that, like, I don't know, fall off here or something. That works too. Actually, is that even like more difficult? I mean, that might just be the more awful way to do it. Hold on. You can like run off the platform right here and just land. That honestly might be better than just doing the stair method, but it's there in case you want to do that, you're more comfortable with it. And then on to the fast track. You get on the wall. Something to note about walls. If you're on the NTSC version and you hold up right or up left until you hit the wall, you will always get on the wall. That being said, if you turn too early, you don't get on the wall sometimes. So you want to make sure you get on the wall, and to be safe, you can get on the wall, slow down, then just start going on the wall. And you got to jump off and try to land in the goal. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's not the most easy thing in the world. This is one of those uh, stages where practicing aiming and falling from, I guess, kind of a high distance into the goal is something you want to definitely use. It's a skill you want to use, being able to aim and maneuver, I guess, yourself in the air to finish in the goal. It's not the most difficult strat in the world, but it'll definitely take a little bit of practice. It's some. This is a strat that I'll even mess up, like, almost, like, commonly. It, it's not the easiest strat. I'll just say that. 
So if you wanted to do it the safer way, I mean, it just loses some seconds. Some seconds? Probably loses between like 5 and 10 seconds, depending on how slow you are. Like, let's see what I do here. I got 55s doing the fast draft. If I do it like this, 50. So, 4 or 5 seconds ish. Not a big deal, but this strat is definitely significantly harder. That being said, you want to practice it and go for it? <laughs> it's pretty fast. Now, junction. You have a green goal and a blue goal. Blue goal, I mean, green goal is faster optimally. Blue goal's safer, so just do blue goal. That's what I do. And you want a left wall. That's, that's the right. You want a right frame boost, left wall, right wall. And this wall you'll almost always roll off of for some reason. I'm not sure why, but you always roll off of it. And you want to just kind of make sure you go slow on that turn and just finish. Very easy end of the world. Something you can do if you're trying to go risky, kind of like on floaters where you can go for that clip. You can try to get this clip, that corner clip, so you slow down less and you get more speed. It's even faster than the floaters thing actually, but it's kind of a similar concept. It's not something I would even recommend going for because it's kind of risky and sometimes you won't get collision or sometimes, okay I'm surprised that worked, but sometimes just something you didn't want to happen is going to happen. Or vice versa, something you wanted to happen didn't happen. But yeah, honestly, just do it like that. Unless you feel like we're doing some risky stuff. And yeah, I'm skipping the cutscenes, by the way. Just press start to skip the cutscenes. You know, why wouldn't you do that? Pro skaters. This one, if you don't press the button quick enough, can lead to disaster. And since you don't want to get the green goal here, make sure you're frame boosting properly. This is where proper boosts come in handy, especially on this stage. You don't actually boost into a wall, but you do frame boost. And it's important to know that if your frame boost sucks, you're not going to make it. So you got to be quick. Because it's not a hard strat. That's very easy. So you just right frame boost. Make sure it's a big enough frame boost. This like It's a pretty normal size to maybe get a little bit of a bigger one. Try to hit this side of the pause button, kind of like when you hit the play button on switches you want to hit like the diagonal part but you can always run into the front of it too it's just you get a higher bounce and you just run into the blue goal simple enough not too bad you can always try to go for the green goal too there are pause frames for it like you want to pause point 80 and 78 you can just hold up like, I don't know why you'd want to do that. It's what you do in challenge mode. <laughs> you just really can't hit this pause button. Or you can always just wait a cycle. And let it work. Wait a cycle if you absolutely need to. I wouldn't recommend it. Just get that frame boost down. And if you somehow mess it up, just retry and try it again. Like, honestly, it's probably quicker to just retry. But it is so not that bad. I've just seen some people mess this up too. It's it's not too bad. Just make sure you boost properly. The uh, boosting properly will come in handy for another strat later in the run. So, okay this one, you have definitely a few options here. You can run straight through it. It's not hard, but it's not easy. What I do, as soon as I get to the edge of this platform, just kind of turn off and start, so I'm kind of veering off to the right a little bit. And you can actually slow down here. And that could be end of the str of the fast part. Just then you can just go one by one. Risky thing though, on this one, sometimes for no reason you could be sitting here on this last one and you'll get hit off the stage. It happens. I'm not sure why it happens, but sometimes it happens, and that's just something I thought I should point out. So you have that approach, or you can actually do this a different way. Hold up till about right here, I and mean, I don't know how to describe that. Right there, and then start turning. But I prefer the first method because you just, you know, you nudge yourself. Once you get off the platform, you just nudge to the right and then just hold up still. I find that easier. And then, if you feel really risky also, here you can try to skip two at a time. It does save time. But it's risky. So, you have a couple of strats here. Like, you can do the beginning like this. And then one way is, this is how I do it. I go off to this side. For the second part, you want to be off to the left, I guess about this much, <laughs> from the bananas in the middle, and just finish. There's another way, was the way I used to do it before, not really actually sure why I switched, I don't think it's any less or more consistent, 
go over to the side like this. Sometimes it doesn't work. And it's it's basically you'll get the same result, assuming everything worked properly. Okay, yeah, I wouldn't recommend that. <laughs> it's it's easier, I guess, to set up, but actually finishing the run isn't. And sometimes it'll work, but sometimes it just won't. I could just be doing it wrong, honestly. I haven't done it in a while. But what I do, that, then go to this side. And sometimes, here's the thing that sucks about this stage. You can get random little bumps off the stage, on this part of the stage, and obviously it'll make you go quicker. So I could, and that's why the second part of the stage is so inconsistent. Because you can get random speed boosts, and... Usually it doesn't happen before, but it can happen like anywhere between here and the second time. And it could completely mess this up. It could mess up the cycle. You could be on the purple and get hit by the comb. So, if you're really good at noticing those random speed boosts and you get like a lot of them, you can try to adjust and slow down a little bit. But that's one of the things that makes the strat really hard. This is not always easy to tell when you're getting them and when you're not getting them. So again, I thought I should point that out. Like, I got a speed bump there, so I didn't have to go as far to the left. But if I get no speed bumps, it's safer to go farther to the left, which I guess I did get, a, like, a speed bump there, because I still died. That was actually, no, that was just too far to the left. I don't know what I was doing. Because gotta go way too far to the left and you'll mess it up and you'll have to slow down before you go on the goal. So honestly, stay closer to the bananas if you can help it. Oh, whoops, I guess I wasn't holding up. This one is tricky. If you're going for this, about right here is where you want to go. No speed bumps, it can be kind of difficult. Too many speed bumps can be kind of difficult. It's inconsistent. Honestly, if you want to do like this is a strat that a lot of people do, or at least some people I've seen do, and it's a pretty good in-between. Do this, and then start doing the skip strat, where you just skip them. Only loses like four seconds. And it, I mean, or again, you can just do them one by one too, it's just, it's much slower. And it's not actually that hard to skip them. Sometimes you'll get lucky like that and get hit and you won't actually die. At that point, you just do the ending like normal. Like I would just do the skip method. I'm just going two at a time. But yeah, that one's it can be inconsistent. World 4 is actually pretty scary because there's a lot of inconsistent strats in this world. Also, a lot of strats we actually hold up on the starting platform, which is something that I said you'd use a lot more later in the run. This is the world where you use a lot of it. Hold up here as well. Obviously, you did that on non giant comb as well. Hold up, and there's two ways you can do this. You just hold up until you get to here. Then nudge left a little bit. Bounce. Bounce, bounce, finish. That's probably the easiest way of doing it. Try to take it a little riskier. Do the same beginning, same middle, and try to bounce just one time, and then finish again. But if you bounce twice, it makes it a lot easier. It's a little slower. Here's the strat I do. Here, instead of continuing to hold up, I turn and go through the middle where the banana bunches are. And that saves even more time. Saves like another like half a second almost. And all I did was just turn and go in the middle and do the ending the exact same way. But if you feel like that's a little tricky for you, you could always just stick to this way. It doesn't lose much time. A lot of people actually still use this way. But it is a little slower. But I mean, yeah, if you have trouble doing the ending quick, I would suggest just doing this and, like, bouncing an extra time or something. Until you get consistent enough, you can do it quick, and to the point where maybe you can just start doing it through the middle, because, like I said, it is the fastest way of doing this. This run strat's very easy. This is not one I would ever consider difficult, even though it can still be difficult. But in comparison to some of the other strats I do, it's one of the easier ones, especially in this world. This stage, you have a few options. I'm going to show, if you want to just, you know, beat the stage, you don't really care about doing the fast skip, just boost or whatever, stay on this side, on the left side, wait for this wall to go up, 
and then go right like about a 49 2 49 1 X you just start going Actually, yeah you don't even need a boost but this setup is the quickest and easiest way of beating dynamic maze without doing any skips now I'm gonna show you a way to do skips one way you can do it is uh whoops you can start boosting this is the less consistent way but this is the way that if you actually get clips will probably make it a lot easier because you have a lot of speed you can just clip right to the end in some instances it's not common most of the time you'll either something like that will happen you'll get a bad bounce or you just won't get one at all so it's inconsistent let's try I do you'll see why this is actually really hard but I can find it more consistent as you go straight and kind of slightly like you can use the little metal parts on the stage as a reference I go one to the right and kind of stay like right here I try to Wow, it actually didn't work there try to go one to the right and then clip and here's the so yeah I'm in the air that's the point of my strat I don't know actually anyone else who actually does it this this way but this is the way I do it and okay can I just keep this one time <laughs> this way I can actually almost get consistently almost but what makes it not consistent is you actually have to bounce up again when that wall goes up and in a lot of instances here's the result of that I actually have to balance on this thing for like a second before it even starts going up which is one thing that makes it really hard but it takes out more of the randomness factor so I find it more consistent even if it is actually harder to do so if you ever get good enough and it's something you want to try I mean it's a pretty cool strat but for now if you want to go for it I would just suggest boosting can you do it this way too so there's multiple ways you can go for it but it's just not consistent at all it's one of those strats that you just it's random unless you do it the way I did it it's always just gonna be random if you get over here by the way go like maybe like a mid 49 okay that was too early but it'll save like a second if you manage to land over there at least over the normal strat but yeah it kinda sucks it's just the way it is if you don't even feel like bothering with this you can do it the slower way but this actually does save like five or six seconds on a normal run sometimes even more than that if you're really quick but uh, yeah that's that stage triangle holes so you can do the really lazy easy way out of this stage of just holding up the whole time you'll always beat the stage assuming you hold up pretty easy but there's actually oh, another really easy way to save a free second on this stage and it still involves you holding up the beginning until you get your first kind of clip up in the air which happens now all you gotta do is move to the left or right finish like that super easy saves an entire second a lot of people don't do it a lot of people just don't know about it but if you just do that move to the side and kind of try to stay in between these triangles you'll I mean I, I don't think I've ever missed it doing this to be honest maybe once or twice in my life it's a very easy and it does save an entire second you can always hold up and be safe but this strap is also very safe again it can be done from both sides I believe I always just do it to the right but it should be able to be done from both sides if you want to be really risky you can actually start boosting and save up to another second but this is obviously less consistent and that only ended up saving a half a second it's less consistent and it's not really recommended because you can get some unpredictable stuff so yeah I would just recommend holding up clip once move to the left or right stay in between the triangles for the rest of the time and simple as that now launchers this can be a tough one you're gonna want to do here That is actually not what you're going to want to do. You're going to want to jump off the platform like this. This is the normal way of doing it. This is a way to get the first cycle. If you don't care about getting the first cycle, don't worry about this. But this is the easiest way to get first cycle. And you just want to make sure you're here 
before 5400 because that's when the cycle, you know, goes. You hit up in the air, get green goal, which was actually really lucky. I wasn't even trying to do that. That is the fastest way of doing it, getting the green goal like that. And obviously in challenge mode, it helps save even more time. But it's not an easy strat, and I wouldn't necessarily recommend going for it. Because if you mess it up and just hit the top of the goal, you'll fall down, and you'll have to catch up to another cycle. And even if you miss that, you're already losing 10 seconds at least. It's pretty bad, actually, for a strat that only saves... It depends on how you do the normal strat, but it saves between like 4 and like 7 or 8 seconds to do that green goal. It's really nice. Here's the normal way of doing it. You just get hit up, and that was kind of a bad hit, but I'm going to try to land on top of this, bounce like two or three times, and then just roll it. Pretty easy. You can also try to, whenever you get over here, try to get completely over that wall. And if you manage to hit the square before it actually hits you, you'll get a slower hit up. Now what this means... You get a quicker time because <laughs> you don't go out, you don't have as much air time but it is still risky but at the same time not that risky because even if you do that and i landed right in the goal even if you do that and just land it also help you make the green goal a little safer as well because you're rolling up a little slower but it does obviously make it slower but for blue goal it is faster you can try to do that and just land on the top and as you can see that saved like four or five seconds over you know getting the normal hit but it is a little risky because you do have to go all the way back until like about right there to get over that wall and still make it which can be kind of tricky for some or again you can just not worry about it do it like normal I mean I guess you can still get the hit even without going over that wall but that's the normal way of doing it and landing straight in Okay, there's that, that's really all I, about, all I have to say for that stage. Randomizer, this can be as easy or as difficult as you want it to be. Easiest way of doing it, just holding up for like the entire stage, pretty much. You can't finish, but you'll get to the very end. Just hold up. Slow down a little bit, and just roll in. Simple as that. Now, here's a strat that I did for a while, where you hold up, and at the very end, you do a little something. You hold up, and maybe that's not, I don't even remember. Actually, <laughs> I hope I remember how to do this, because this is a nice little strat to do, if you, like a really safe, easy strat. That's how you do it. Like right before you bounce up and hit the goal, you just start holding up right, and you'll like pretty much land right in front of the goal, and then you just roll in. Pretty simple. Again, doing it the safe way, though. It's uh, probably the most consistent way of doing it. You know, just slowing down, rolling in. Earlier slow down, safer it'll be. And now here's the fast strat. Which this is... Uh, this saves like a second. Or two seconds. I wouldn't recommend going for this unless you really are really paying attention to what you're doing. Because if you mess this up, I mean, you don't want to die on this stage. This is not a stage you want to die on. You don't even have to get the red goal. Challenge mode, it's a different story. You would just like use like a pause frame or something, get the red goal, that's a consistent way. But on this stage, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go until this part. As you can see on the stage, there's that little gray um, piece of metal that goes across it that all those little lines are connected to. When you get there, I'm going to turn, and then turn again, and stay on this side. Until this hit, where I'll move to the side here, get another hit, and go right to the green goal at a 49.68 or a 49.70 pretty much every single time. So it does save a little bit of time for sure, but the consequences of messing it up, like let's say I somehow don't do the movement right and my hits are incorrect, which that was actually weird. My hit actually wasn't correct, but it, it still ended up working. Let's say trying to figure out a way to manipulate it. It's actually not that hard. See, there we go. Now I'm getting the wrong hits. You know, it could... something like that. It's risky. But definitely, if you really pay attention and really, like, practice this one, you can get it down. 
it's not too hard. It's actually pretty easy. But that being said, you're adding a risk factor to a stage that essentially had no risk factor before to save an extra second and a half to two seconds. So, you could do it if you wanted to. Again, the thing I did for the longest time was just doing that. Super easy. It's like a little bit over a second slower. So, it's, it's your choice, basically. Again, obviously, for the faster strats. If you can do any of the faster strats, do them. But if they're not consistent, just do the easier strat until you can get consistent. Because unless you're going for a world record time, you don't have to do every world record strat, you know? You can do just fine without some of them. Okay, so I'm going to show two strats here. Easy strat first. In fact, so easy, you can do it without even pausing. Oh, well, that is if you're good. You basically wait until like right before 56, or pretty much right at when it goes to 56 and then adjust again. And it's like that. Now I'm going to do it with the frames, because that's the more logical way of going about it. The frames that work here... Does 08 work? I'm actually not too sure. No, it does not. Okay, so I think it's everything between 06 and 00. So 06, 05, 03, 01, and 00 all work. 57. So this one, you can't actually hold straight up. You do have to slightly, slightly drift to the right. Because naturally, you'll start drifting to the left on this stage. Some stages do that. I'm not sure why. But you do that, you'll finish in the green goal every single time. Very easy strat. Now here's the harder strat that saves like an extra two seconds. But it's kind of like randomizer. It's, it's very difficult, or not super difficult, but you really have to pay attention to what you're doing. Because what we're going to do is we're going to get a faster goal, which in challenge mode this would be slower because you're getting a blue goal, but story mode obviously doesn't matter. This can be done with earlier frames with a different setup, but the setup I've found most consistent is using point .33 and 31. And you're going to do a similar thing to randomizer, where you go to here, then kind of go to the side, and instead of going to the, like, until like here, which I messed it up now that I did that. You're actually gonna go on that last like line and just kind of stay there, like right here. And that's a good visual cue actually of where you need to be. And since I got 33, the goal's gonna be slightly closer to the right because it's earlier, because the goal's actually going to the left. So, as you can see, <laughs> you don't have a big window to do this. But it's a really cool strat. I mean, just look at this. Get it right as it comes down. It's really cool. You can also be done with 31. Doing the exact same setup. Except maybe going a little, little closer to the left. Because the goal will be slightly closer to the left. It is riskier, though. And, obviously, you mess it up, it's not good, because then you're going to have to probably just retry. If you mess it up, you basically just want to retry, even if you manage to live. And that's that strat. Now onto a pretty easy stage. This one can be, again, as easy or as difficult as you want to be. Because the faster you go, it can get pretty hard. But if you just go slow, like do those boosts like I did. This is, I think, the only stage, actually, in this entire world that you do a normal frame boost, wall boost, wall boost. And even then, the, like you want to slow down kind of at the end, because if you go too fast, oh my gosh, I'm falling off. So it's not, it's, uh, it's not too hard. You're just going to go through this kind of slow. If you're trying to be safe, you don't have to hit off of anything. Go around these one at a time. Simple as that. I could even go around that other one that I didn't to make that safer. This part's kind of hard, make sure you can get it. And you should get around 31, 30 seconds. Now if you want to do some risky stuff, try to save time. You could try to clip as many corners as you can and try to bounce off of those cylinders. Which I'm going to try to do at least one run where I get like a 30, like 3 or 4. To kind of show off what I'm saying. Because obviously if you hit these, it's a decent amount faster because you can carry all your speed throughout the run. Okay, that was bad. 
I'm hoping giving you kind of a visual representation of what I mean. You bounce off of stuff, and as long as you do it quick, you can save time. Sometimes you do it so bad or not good enough, it just ends up not even saving time. <laughs> so I guess I'll try to do one more run of that. If I don't get a fast one, oh well. You get the idea, I hope. But again, it's risky stuff that you can do to throw in to save extra time if need be, but it is not really recommended. For, especially for new runners to try to do risky stuff like that. It's just not necessary. Because if you're a new runner, saving one to two seconds on a stage like that isn't as big of a deal as just getting, let's say, like a really hard fast strat. Okay, this one. This is the stage. This is the stage that most new runners seems to me like that they just stop. And there's many ways of doing this. In fact, there's even a way where I'm pretty sure if you hold up, and I can't remember what the frame is, but you, like, hold back, like, was it 51? Okay, wow, I guess that first try. I didn't even know. So here's the easy way. If you feel like using a pause frame and want to beat this most times, just hold up. And I actually don't think there's other frames that work, but you might be able to adjust them and make them work. But this is seriously, this is just a thing you can do, because this stage gives so many people trouble. I would recommend just really learning the stage and trying to get better at it if you can help it. But yeah, just hold back left. And you'll finish every time. It looks kind of cool. And now, here's the first method. Which I guess is just waiting for, like, this is the slowest one. Waiting, like, 20 seconds for this goal to turn around. Because they put it on such an awful cycle for at least casual players. For ILs, which are individual level runs for fast times and high scores... It's pretty cool because you can just jump down there and get the goal while it's under there, but you just do something like that and try to run in. It's very slow. You can do the same thing, except uh, this is just random boost pattern, no boost like that. You can try to just get on this platform and then just wait around right here. The spider will never step on you. This is what I used to do whenever I was younger. Just wait. When the goal comes up, be sure not to miss it roll in. Now, let me get those stages out of the way. Here's what I would do. You can either not boost here, boost here, frame boost, wall boost, which is usually what I do if I do this strat. And you can go off either side as well. You can go off to the left and kind of do this and try to land in the goal. That's not the way I do it. I find going off to the right easier. And I do a left frame boost, right wall, And then try to land in like that. I just find it easier. You don't even have to boost. Or you can like uh, just frame boost. And then go for it. And that's the way I would recommend it if you don't want to use the pause frame. And it's just, it's just a good strat to learn. You definitely want to learn to do this at some point. Because it's a big deal. Like you'll save, over doing the slowest strat, you'll save almost 20 seconds. So, it's definitely something to consider. If you can't do it right now, or if you're doing, let's say you're doing Storm Mode Glitch, this could be a stage people skip, because they just can't do it consistently. That's understandable. But it's something you definitely could learn. Now here's the harder strat, which I would not recommend, period. Unless you're going for World Record. Because all it does is it saves about another second. To jump down here, bounce on that, and land in the goal. It's crazy. And it's not consistent at all. It basically comes down to just pure skill and a bit of luck even. I guess a bit of luck. It's mostly skill, but it's really hard. There's two ways of doing it. It's the easier way and the hard way, which I don't know why I'm showing off. The easier way saves like half a second over the other strat. Which is landing on that... Okay. I I'm sorry. I'm, I'm actually better than this. I swear. Which is... Bouncing on that then landing in the goal. The reason that helps is because it gives you a little bit more time, I guess, to try to readjust yourself and then just fall into the goal. What am I doing wrong? I'm doing something wrong. Because I am not getting the bounces I normally get. There we go. And then just roll in. And then the other strat, which is a decent bit harder, is the fastest strat you could run strat you can do on the stage. Let's do that, and then land in. Just doing that strat, you know, bit faster is like literally the IL strat so 
It's the hardest strat, but it's the quickest and the coolest looking. I would stick to the going over the top and falling down method. It's the best way to learn. I've done I did this strat for the longest time. It is definitely the best strat to do for most players. And that is the end of World 4. So we'll go right into World 5. We're already at an hour and 25 minutes. This is a long video. Okay, so here's bad collision detection really comes into play. I think that sucks about this stage, if you get bad collision detection here and choose to continue with the level, you will lose like 13 or 14 seconds versus if you just got that clip. It's probably one of the worst in the run, at least in this category in terms of what collision detection can do to make or break your run. So I'm going to try to do a run where I get the collision detection, kind of show you what it looks like. You want to, okay, easiest way of doing this, left wall, left frame boost, right wall, left wall and then run into this edge and there's a prime example of what happens most of the time <laughs> you don't get a clip at all it's just pretty ridiculous and that's what a clip does look like it can not be that scary you can get on without going that far but you roll in it's very quick I guess I'll, I'll try to do a run that it looks actually kinda of fast see rolling over that corner sucks You have. Okay, hold on. I'll talk more about the backup strat, which is just doing it normally. After I get this once, please. So I want to show you what it looks like when you actually get the best possible clip. Oh my gosh, okay, I'm getting really bad luck today. Like, this is the most comparable thing to RNG, probably, in this run. Even though this technically isn't RNG, believe it or not. It sure feels like it. Because <laughs> it's pretty much random. Okay. So maybe I won't get to show you because I can't get it. Because it's not hard. I mean, I get it and runs when I can't. It's just it's just a matter of luck. Like this might as well be a random number generator on whether you get a clip or don't get a clip. And right, oh my gosh, I usually get more than this. I might even like cut this out of the video. This is taking forever. Oh man, this is embarrassing. I cannot get the strat. If I don't get this for like another minute, I'll just cut this out. This is terrible. I am so sorry. I am so sorry. I don't even know what I'm doing. There you go. Okay. Well, that wasn't even close to what I was trying to show you. But I was trying to show you that if you get a higher clip, you can get one that like kind of stops you going forward. All your forward momentum transfers into going up. And you can actually finish in the back of the goal and save like another second and a half to two seconds. Versus getting the more forward clip and having to stop and turn around and roll back. That forward clip can also be dangerous because sometimes you go so far forward you'll have to land on that thin path otherwise you'll fall down to the bottom. So I guess we can talk about the backup strat now. Or just the normal strat because I'm getting the worst collision today. It's a good thing I'm not doing runs because well <laughs> this is terrible. So here's what happens when you don't get a clip which, okay, oh, I see how it is. That's the fastest way of doing it. So now let's show you what happens when you don't get a clip. You don't get a clip, you have two options. Right. Really? Is this happening? No, I'm just gonna avoid that corner entirely. So here's what you do. You have two options. You can pause and retry. It's kind of a gamble because if you don't get it the first try after that, you wasted time. But it's also a gamble because if you get it, if you retry right now, you miss it, retry and get it, it still save time. It'll save time over just doing the stage normally. So you basically have two chances to save time here. But if you go for it twice and miss it both times and you ended up losing even more than 14 seconds, you lost over 20. So, I mean, I guess over just getting it the first time. So it's pretty easy to lose time here if you're not careful. Depending on the run, I'll usually, if I miss it, I'll retry and go for it. If I don't get it, I'll just reset. Or sometimes I'll just, just do it the normal way. So if you miss it, you basically just beat the stage normally as fast as you can. There's nothing to it. You can try to clip edges to save more time, which is usually what I'll try to do. You know, clip some edges, save time. But you can go as fast or slow as you need. But this stage... This is definitely one of the worst in terms of 
lucky collision strats, at least in this category. There's a handful of them in challenge mode too that aren't actually in story mode that are just as bad, like Giant Swing in the um, Expert Speedrun. So you can beat it normally like that. Let's go on a free fall. Obviously, Blue Gold's gonna be faster here because you're closer to it. You're just gonna get on the wall like that, go for a little bit, and jump off and try to land on the goal. Pretty easy. I don't actually, how long do you stay on this wall? Maybe like a little, a second, a little more than a second. Depends on if you slow down. You get on the wall and like turn like that versus you get on the wall without really slowing down at all. Because you can also do that, but again, but it's it's a little riskier because you don't want to fall off the wall and you also don't want to turn too soon and not get on the wall. So, and this is another strat where practicing falling into goals is really going to pay off. This isn't the only stage, but this is definitely one of them. It'll definitely be a big factor. Sometimes, this is also one of the worst in terms of falling because sometimes you'll just bonk off the tape, the party ball, whatever happens, and you just won't finish. But it's not too bad once you get used to it. Just trying to land right in the tape. Might take some practice, but you'll get used to it. So here we go, melting pot. Easy one. All you do, right frame boost, small right frame boost, left wall, roll into the goal. Very simple. I guess I can kind of explain. Like, you want to go between these balls right here and not hit these balls. Like... So there's, the only ones you have, yeah, the only two balls, you only have two balls to the right of you when you do this strat. And if you miss it, it could be pretty scary. Let's say, oh no, I missed it. You can try, I guess, to come over here and then roll back into it. But honestly, if you miss it, it's probably safer to just pause and retry, actually. Like, there's plenty of stages where a backup strat is necessary, but this is story mode. Pausing and retrying is probably the best option. Because this backup strat... It's not really good. Sometimes things can happen. So this is definitely another one of those stages I would probably just pause and retry if you miss it. Like pro skaters. Now here's another one, also like Pro Skaters, funny I mentioned that, that it's going to come down to how good of a frame boost you can do at the beginning. Instead of hitting a switch, you're trying to catch a cycle. And you want to, it's actually faster to right frame boost here, I know that for a fact. Make sure it's like a big enough frame boost that you'll save time, but not so big, like, because here's a tiny one. We okay, let's go for the cycle. Barely, barely made it. Versus... Big frame boost, hit the wormhole, you know? You gotta be careful, you gotta do one just right. That was pretty close. Frame boost and then swivel maybe a little bit. And then, well, I didn't even clip it all right there, but you normally you'll get a clip of some kind, like that. Bounce, bounce, and go over the side, finish. And I guess I can try to explain the cycle in a little more detail. What happens is you get on here, that thing's gonna go over the side, then this next platform that you're on goes over the side. Then this one, which I guess this is like the second or third one that you're on, you turn. And then just finish the stage like that. So that's what happens if you get a clip. You usually just bounce twice, and on your second bounce you move over to the other side. If you comp just roll onto it, I guess just pay attention. If you just roll onto it, You'll fall, like, the platform will move over to the side, and you'll, like, fall onto the next one. You do that twice before you move over. Make sure you keep track of that cycle, because you don't want to mess up the cycle, because you, you forgot it, or weren't paying attention, or whatever. You just want to make sure you get that down. And it's not too difficult. So here we are speed screen. You have a couple options here. I want to say you wait five seconds right till then. Okay, I waited too late. I can't remember exactly. I think you wait until a, a mid-55. And then start your left frame boost, right wall, left wall. 
And you can try to run through it like that. That method, it's nice because you don't have to press any buttons. But if you don't time it right, it can actually be scarier. And it's even slower than the strat that I do. But the strat that I do, if you can mess up the buttons, then it's just, I don't know, sometimes people can find it annoying. If you want to frame boost to the right, hit the left wall, and then slow down, hit this fast, uh, I guess it's a fast rewind, and then run into the pause button. Kind of in quick succession, so you can run into the goal. Problem is, you messed this up. Like, let's say, I missed the switch, or I don't get to this in time. Obviously, it's going to become a problem. Like, yeah, let's say I missed, I don't get the pause button in time. That's probably the most likely thing that could happen. You could have a stage that looks like this. All you got to do is just, I guess, just play it again until you can get it to pause. You can use the mini-map for reference here. You don't even have to be looking at the stage. But it's just nice. This is an easy, easy way of doing it. But I, I guess I will, I don't even know why I'm showing it. I really wouldn't even recommend doing this. But that's just another way of doing it, buttonless. But yeah, this way, probably the easiest way. There actually is another way of doing it. Instead of hitting that fast rewind button, you can just hit the slow rewind button. And that way, you have more time to press the pause button. A little safer, it's about as fast as the buttonless strat. But yeah, obviously, best way, do the fast rewind, quickly get over the pause button. Try to hit the diagonal part of the pause button too, because sometimes you can bounce off of it and then, you know, keep your speed and go roll into the goal quicker. It's not a hard one. Speaking of not hard stages, we're running into a few. Here's jump machine. All you gotta do here is boost, doesn't really matter. Just get here, make sure you're not actually bouncing. What I mean by that is, maybe I'll try to do the run strat for the challenge mode goal. You do something like that, you get a weird bounce that doesn't always suit your needs, or... Yeah, a bounce that doesn't necessarily work with the strat you're trying to do. So just make sure that whenever you get hit up, you're not really moving. Then, you get here, you can land right into the tape. The thing that happens is the trampoline that the blue goal's on comes up right when you get to it, so you can actually land in the goal right there, like right as the trampoline's up. Which is why it's kind of important to try to make sure you get that same bounce, because it makes it really easy. But yeah, you just turn around and try to aim right there. In fact, you almost want to aim like above the party ball, because the goal will, again, bounce up, and then you land in the tape. So, I guess the cue is a little weird, because the goal moves right before you finish, but it's an easy strat. And you don't want to go too far, because you don't want something like that to happen. Of course, you can always do it the easy way of just waiting and finishing. That way works just fine, too. It's just like a second and a half slower, and I don't consider this other strat to be hard, either. But honestly, if you wanted to, you very easily could just do that. Or better it, you could even land on this and then finish because it's already yeah it's already up in the air when you get to it you know this is just a pretty not that difficult way to finish immediately here's another easy stage pay attention to the path I actually take because it is actually faster because even though the left and right might look identical the left path actually is less steep so it's faster because you have to climb them up, and it's less steep, so it's actually faster to climb up those ones than it is to climb up the right side. So, take note in that. And I mean, there's nothing special here, you just right wall, and you pretty much just run through the stage. You go left, right, left, right. And like I said, I'm staying on the left side of the stage the entire time. Pretty easy. Now there are some things that you can do to try to speed the stage up a little bit that are a little risky, going for some clips. Like I didn't get one there, but let's see if I can get one here. Like that. Stuff like that. Get multiple clips, you can build them a lot of speed. 
save some time. End up saving up to like two or three seconds if you get all of them, but it's not likely. Now we're on tower. There's a few different things you can do here. This can be a tricky stage for some. Just want to left boost right wall. And the easy way of doing this would be to just fall down on this one. And bounce up like that and finish. I consider that to be a pretty easy way to beat it. There's actually another easy way of beating it too, which might... Okay, I missed that wall, but this might even be easier. What you want to do is you want to turn around here, bounce on the flat ground, and then kind of roll up on here, and then finish. And you could be as slow or as quick as you want to be. That's kind of a quick, easy way to beat the level. The other way works too. It's really preference, I guess. I guess the only thing that could be bad about this way is you could, let's say, something like that can happen. Oh my god, I keep boosting way too wide. I'm not sure why I'm doing that. Because you do want to hit that wall, it's definitely a little quicker. Now, here's some of the quicker strats. First one, again, kind of a quicker strat of what I already showed. Kind of like that. You just bounce once and then try to land on the thing like once or twice. Or you could just bounce once and then land on the tape. Really, either way, it'll work. Although I wouldn't really recommend that second way. If you're going to do it like that, I would recommend just landing on the stage again. And then the fastest strat, which is just turning around, landing, straight in the goal. want to practice that because there are a few things that can happen. It's actually a kind of tight to make that. And I've messed it up plenty of times. Here's the reason that it's kind of tight. Is one, you could do this trying to land on the tape. Or two, kind of like free fall, you can just bounce off the party ball or the top of the goal and not go in. I guess you could even take this like really slow and land on this one even. If you want to do that, you want to jump off to the right first. But that's like really, really, really safe. You don't actually need to take it that safe. I mean, unless you really just really feel more comfortable doing that. But I mean, this is a speed run after all. So, just do whatever you can do, whatever the faster strat is that you can do. This one's easy. All you gotta do, and this is seriously all it takes, wait a half a second, then boost, and go. That's all you gotta do. And then just stay on the side that the thing isn't rotating on. So you wait half a second, right wall, then stay on the right until that thing goes flat, and then go to the left. And sometimes you get some random bounces and weird things can happen, but for the most part, this is pretty easy, and that's it's just the strat. I mean, yeah, that's all there is to it. Huh. Oh, whoops, I guess I first framed which, like I said, a long time ago, if you actually pause and you pause too early after you finish the stage, like a frame or two too early, you can still, uh, you can actually not finish the stage. So yeah, here's fluctuation. All you want to do, get on this wall. You don't have to get on the wall. I'd recommend getting on the wall. Get on the wall and then run down. And then you want to run over these holes. that simple. The reason you want to get on this wall is because there's no blocks in the way if you go here. So you can just run over all these. And sometimes the collision's unpredictable, but you can just finish. Easy way to make that first cycle. Another way, you don't actually have to get on the wall. We also might have to slow down a little bit. Like maybe like wait like half a second then go. Is these blocks will be out of your way. So then you can do it over here, but I'd recommend just trying to get on the wall if you can help it. And of course, getting on the wall means you're going to do it a little bit faster or a little bit slower. That's all there is to it. I'm only halfway through this tutorial. What am I doing?
Alright, here we go. Combination. A few options here, obviously. You can press the play button. Actually, speaking of that, I don't think I ever mentioned on, not like, what was it, match shuffle? You can actually press the play button on that, too. I don't think I ever mentioned that. If there's a stage that has a play button, and you can't do it on fast forward, press the play button. It's not that big of a deal. The only one I consider not doing that on is um, organic form. Because organic form is like on fast forward, it's really not that much more difficult. But all the other stages, stuff like match shuffle, you can't make that first cycle no matter what you do. Just go press the play button. The only problem is you're going to have to kind of like relearn the cycle. Because it's, it's different, but besides that, I mean... You can press the play button on any of these stages that you need to. Just thought I'd point that out. But the problem is, again, you do it, the cycle's going to be really weird. So let's go with the actual strat. A few things you can do. You can do this, where you go over to this side. Or I guess you can boost. You go about right here. And then just go along in a diagonal path to the goal. That's what I used to do a long time ago. Pretty easy. Although, obviously, if you're still not quick enough, you're not going to make it. But here's the strat I do now. It's, you you hold up till about right here, and turn, and then you turn back. And uh, Wow, this is a really good explanation. Top-notch stuff. Turn, turn, until un you go into this platform. Then you get here, and around right, right here, you want to pull back, or I guess a little sooner than that. You're going to want to pull back and then just roll to the goal. It's a pretty easy strat. It's actually slightly faster than doing the other thing. Optimally, it's a decent bit faster, but once you do that, you can just roll right in. Pretty simple. That's all there is to it. Could take some getting used to, but once you do, it's not too bad. This stage... I mean, I guess you could, like, beat it normally if you really needed to, but you can, like, swerve around each thing and finish, which is a couple seconds slower. Or you can left, uh, left, right, blah, 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 left, right, I mean, I guess you could boost either way and do this, doesn't really matter. And you can just run to the side of all these, clip on the last circle, and go into the goal. Like, you don't have to go into the green goal, so it's not too bad. You can still mess it up, but it's not too difficult. You can always just take it slower and, you know, go around some of them if you need to. Opera, this one can give people some trouble. The easiest, safest way of doing this, obviously, is just doing the entire stage normally, which means you got to go pretty slow at the end so you don't die. I wouldn't recommend doing that. There's actually a pretty easy way to at least skip this last ring. Now you gotta do is line up, say about right here, on like this line of checkers, and then just turn and go. Actually, that might have even been, I had to adjust that, that might have actually even been too much. Let's try lining up in the middle. I, I, I'm gonna mention this right now, I'm, imp I'm improvising a lot of these slower strats, so. <laughs> I don't do them. Uh, let's try right here. Just right in the middle. Be aiming to like the side or something, then just turn up. And yeah, that's a. Well, wow. This actually isn't the most easy thing in the world. It can be tricky. You might want to adjust a little bit. But this saves a lot of time over just going down the entire stage normally, which you could do. But look how slow you gotta do this. Because otherwise, you get, it gets crazy, and it's hard to keep track of what's going on. Like, oh my gosh! You gotta keep track of what's going on. Otherwise, you could just do this little skip, and it's not that bad. I'll have to get back to it yet again. Because I haven't gotten it yet. These first three rings, though, you can go a little quick on. This last, or this third one, maybe not as much. But you go, yeah, I've been, like, right here, and you just turn, and... Oh my gosh, can I just get one attempt right? I mean, that's not actually hard, I swear. I'm just not used to doing these slow of strats, but... Uh, I'll try it again one more time. Go right here, turn. <sighs> just 
try it again. So obviously my setup, it, it, it's not consistent all the time. I don't know why. Because before I was going too far in that same spot, and that time I didn't even make it. Even though I was in the same spot. So I guess maybe in between these two things. Between this line and that little middle path. Just turn, maybe adjust if you have to, and finish. It's not too hard. I made that look a lot more difficult than it is. Could take a little getting used to, but it's not too hard. And it does save a bit of time. Or you can do this strat, which is what I usually do. Bounce on that third row. Oh my gosh. This is a hard stage. So you go around this first ring like normal. Then you go around most of the second ring like normal. Oh man, maybe I should just stop and do the rest of this tutorial later. What am I doing? Bounce one time on that ring. Oh my gosh, I keep getting like the most unlucky things. Because if you actually manage... Okay, I still finished. Wow. If you manage to land like on the edge of a stair, like it'll mess up the mess up the strat. It'll be a little harder to do. But if you just land flat on the stair, this is actually really easy. And it's still a little harder than the other strat, obviously. It does save a decent amount of time over the other strat. But you can do that and then land in. And it saves like another like eight or nine seconds over the other strat I showed. Then there's even like the IL strat. Which is crazy difficult and I wouldn't recommend but it's one of those like kind of YOLO strats you can just throw in at the last second if you need to save extra time and I want to see if I can do it at least once because there's some people who will literally do these in runs um, that wasn't quite what I was going for and I uh, was meant to hit that ring Okay, well you get the idea. What you do is you go under that platform, and then you basically just land straight in the goal. Like the last thing you touch is that, and then you go under, and you finish. Just like that. And that's not recommended. The strat, again, I do, you can go on either side of the rings, by the way, it doesn't matter. But what I do is I go on this side, and then bounce one time, and finish. But most of these strats are actually a little inconsistent. It's a harder stage, for sure. There's some stages, especially late in the run, that get a little tricky, even when you do the easiest strat. And, I mean, the easier way to do this stage would be to just do it normally, but it's so slow. So. This strat, easy. Two options. Left, frame, left wall boost, and then run to that fish. You see that fish? See that fish that not, like, is directly in front of me? Run toward that. Except we're going to actually run toward... It's right fin. And that actually should have worked. That was really unlucky collision. Run toward its right fin. Finish. It's a visual cue. And it's not that hard. I just know that this is a strat that exists, so I show it. Here's the strat I do. Hold up. About right here, right when I get off the platform. Hold up right. Pretty easy. You don't get to run towards the fish, but it's still pretty easy. It actually loses like two frames. Here's what you do here. I right frame boost. Go down two platforms, then run against I run along this one, which is a little hard. And then at the end I jump down to the bottom to save more time. Let's show you an easier way, because uh, maybe not everyone wants to do that one. You can actually go down another platform or go to the very bottom. And run along this one full speed pretty easily as long as you keep um, steady control of the ball. It is a little slower though, about four or five seconds slower. Or you can go down just two platforms. This one's a little bit easier still than the normal strat, but it's still a little slower. Just want to make sure about this point. Okay, actually, you don't have to do that. I was going to say, you could have jumped off right there, but you actually can wait and jump off once you're actually at the end. You can actually wait until here and then jump off, and it saves like another two seconds. But then this one saves yet another two or three seconds if you manage to do this. And here you also have two options. You can, one, just go in the green goal. Nothing special at the end. Or to save just a little bit extra time, like another like half a second, 
you can jump down to the blue goal at the end because you get more speed because you're, I guess, jumping down. It actually is a little bit faster. Cliffs, a few options here. Easier method, just boost or whatever. Go here, bounce there, bounce here. Bam, you're already at the end. And just finish like normal. That's a pretty safe and easy way to do it. Said you just want to bounce here once or twice, then try to land, I guess, where I'm where this banana is. And then it's pretty easy to land on this. And then finish. Like, it's still pretty fast. You skip most of the stage. A little bit harder thing, you could boost and then try to not bounce on that at all. And do the same thing. Or, here's a little bit faster strap. Bounce on this then bounce here, and then instead of bouncing on the other platform, just landing straight in the goal. It's not too hard, the angle's pretty easy. Of course, you can also do it with skipping the beginning, which is the fast strat most people will do now. Just doing that gets pretty fast. This is actually the one I would recommend. That, or bouncing on the first platform and doing the same thing. That's like the general fast strat that most people do. There's a riskier, even faster strat that I do sometimes. There's some strat that I'll do sometimes, and it's holding up, and then about close to the end of the platform you turn, or I didn't turn until the very end, you want to turn a little sooner, turn, bounce twice, if you can manage it, you do bounce, and then start holding back, oh my gosh, I really am better than this, I swear, and you kind of go back right pretty hard switch between that and upright to try to land right in the goal without bouncing again. It saves another second, but it's very difficult. Wouldn't recommend unless, again, you're going for a really top time. Because this is not an easy strat by any means. So, again, strat I'd recommend. Just do something along the lines of this. A lot easier. Narrow Peaks, again, you have a couple options here. Save method going all the way to the back of the platform then going up boosting one time on one of the walls and then finishing that is the safest and easiest way to beat that stage you can do it either side it doesn't really matter you just go to the back and boost and there you go of course you don't have to go all the way back you can go like maybe just a little bit farther back and still go for it and sometimes you'll still make it but it's a little more risky then there is the strat where you could like run at it like this. Not recommended, period. The strat I do is you hold up and then about right here, you hold back for like point two, or maybe even like just point one. Like you pretty much just flick back and then flick up again. And you bounce over, and that was weird collision. But the reason that works is because you actually don't drift, please. You actually bounce there one time before getting over to this other side. And it makes it pretty easy. It's actually, this one can still be a little tricky though. It does save a few seconds over doing going to the back though, as you can tell. So it is worth it, but you also don't want to mess this up too much. Yeah, do whatever strat you feel like you can, you're comfortable with. Here, you actually, you could do the blue goal on this stage if you're not comfortable jumping to the green goal, even though I wouldn't really recommend it. But you could, let's say, like, let's say I jump off here, and I just want to be safe, go through the portal, go in the blue goal. That's just fine. However, if you want to save a little more time, you can run to the very end of this platform, all the way until, like, around right in this, right in that corner. Then just land right in the green goal. Really cool, actually, you could do that. Sorry, it's, uh, it's kind of hard to talk right now, but uh, you can do that, fairly simple, and you don't have to bounce off anything. Wouldn't recommend bouncing off that block, actually. Or yet the even harder strat, or the actual like kind of hard strat, is jumping off fairly early, like around right now, bouncing off of that once, then going in the goal. <laughs> the longer you wait to do this, the, I guess the easier it is but the slower it'll be. Whoops. But that is another way of doing it. If you want to do the super easy way, you can just run all the way to the end. But if you did want to save up to another second, do it like this. 
damage. That's pretty fast, and it's actually not even that that super hard. It can be a little hard, but it's not the worst thing in the world. Switch Inferno, there's pretty much like one solid way you can do this. There are a few switches that actually open up the goal, but you can boost either way. It doesn't really matter, I guess. Boost to the left, wall right, and, well, I don't know why I reset there. But you're going to hit a specific switch. There are other switches that work, but this is the fastest way of doing this, at least in an RTA. You're going to go over here. Um, well, first you want to actually beat the stage before you stage select. And then you're going to... So, okay. Right here. And there's that path of switches that lead directly up to the goal. You actually want to go to the left of those. And if you count one, two, three, four, and then this fifth switch right here on your left is the one that takes the goal out of the ground. You press that, and you pretty much just try to press that kind of fast and beat the stage, and that's pretty much all there is to the strat. Nothing special. There is another switch that works that you could also do if you wanted to. Stay over here and hit the third one on your right. Wait a minute. No, it's not. It's the third one way over here, isn't it? Yeah, it's that third one. As you can see, it's a little riskier, and I don't even really think it saves time. But it is another switch you could press if you wanted to, I guess. The IL strat actually bounces off of that switch, so I guess in theory it is a little faster, but the safest run strat is just to press that one on the left. I guess I'll do it one more time. It's the fifth one on the far left. Whenever you go down the middle, you go over to this side and then hit the fifth one on your left. Pretty easy. Folders. Do this as easy or as difficult as you want. Safe way of doing it is maybe boosting, then just you just ride the side all the way there if you really want to. Very safe and easy way of doing it. You will never mess this up, I can guarantee you that. Or, better way of doing it, try to go for some bounces. And, unfortunately, due to the wall collision not being 100% consistent, you could get a very different result every time you do this. So right here I'm going to try to bounce, and you basically just kind of want to improvise a little bit and just try to keep up with these folders that are going down and coming back up. And you'll get around a mid-48. Mid if you keep around that cycle, that's like the normal cycle of doing this. It's not that hard, just kind of stay relatively close to the folders that come up. And there is the fast cycle that you can go for. There's some situations where you can't even make it, but for the most part, you can. And again, this part's scary because you kind of have to improvise it. Like, the way I just did it right there is not even, like, close to the normal way of doing it. But it's something risky you can go for, and it saves a few extra seconds. And that, uh, that didn't save anything because I died. I was going to say I didn't think that would make it. I'm trying to get at least one run that, like, does the early cycle, but in the normal fashion, which is usually hitting around the sixth or fifth or sixth folder. It's out of the fourth or fifth folder, rather. That's the fifth one. And that's pretty much kind of the normal way of doing that faster strat. You can do either way. I mean, it's risky. I'd recommend just doing the normal 48 cycle. We're on World 7 now. This is one of the hardest worlds in the run, besides maybe like World 8. And now here, you want a right frame boost, left wall, and then you could try to bounce on this if you wanted to. However, if you're going for the normal cycle, really, you don't have to do any of that. You don't even have to boost if you don't want to. You can slow down, and just slowly roll up this hill, because you're going to have to wait a while for a cycle, unless you plan on making the earliest cycle, which is that one right there. And in that case, you're going to have to go pretty quick. Otherwise, you can just kind of wait around here, then uh, kind of get ready as that approaches and run in. Want to make the fast cycle, though, you got to 
right frame boost left wall get a, at least a decent clip up this ramp and then kind of keep this motion stay like towards the inside of the bridge until you get a little bit past that banana right there go on the outside for a little bit and then turn in sharp so you can keep all your speed and momentum when you get up to the top and that barely made it but that is the early cycle most people do not make this cycle on a regular basis. This is even harder than the Curve Bridge first cycle, so... It's not something that should be worried about getting, ever. Unless you're, like, again, getting... Going for a pretty, uh, good time. There was a point, I think my first Twitch highlight ever was me, or one of my first Twitch highlights ever was me freaking out when I actually got this strat. It, it, cause at that point, it was something that no one ever actually did run, so... I mean, I've come a long way from that point, but most people still don't really do this strat in runs. Or they, I mean, they could go for the cycle, but not actually make it ever. It's... it's a tough one. And again, you can still make it, even with a kind of bad beginning, but it's harder. But yeah, you just stay on the outside. Then once you pass that banana, start kind of going to, or stay on the inside of the bridge, rather. Then when you get to that banana in the middle of the bridge, start kind of going to the outside a little bit for just a little bit, like a half a second to maybe three quarters of a second, then start curving in pretty, pretty sharp on the last, like, I don't know, the last, like, second of being on the orange part of the bridge. Because, again, that's what uh, helps you keep, like, have a bunch of speed going off that last part, because that part can be pretty slow. Like, I'll even show you. Like, if you don't do that and just go up this normally, it's pretty slow. Whereas, if you do it the way I'm explaining, well, first of all, you want to stay on the bridge. You don't want to fall off of it. Stay on the inside and start kind of going to the outside, then turn in sharp for the last part, and make it smoothly on. Now we're getting to a little bit of an easier of a stage, known as Wavy Option. You just want to left frame boost, right wall, Take the second fattest path, slow down at the end to be safe if you want, and finish. It's that simple. You could take the fattest, fattest path, but it really doesn't make it that much easier, and it just makes getting the goal harder. <laughs> or you could even do it on this side. Yeah, I don't know if you want to be cool, I guess. I don't even do that side. But the most optimal path that most people should just do, just take this one. Second biggest. And you can do it without slowing down at all. But it can be a little risky. And that's pretty much it. Okay, obstacle. This one also has an early cycle. Easiest way to get it. Right, uh, wall boost to the right. Go here. Kind of slow a little bit. Try to maybe cut that corner off just a little bit. And you can make it. That's all you gotta do. And if you miss it, that's okay. You have two options. If you miss it, you can pause and retry and go for it again, or you can wait for the next cycle. It might save like another like two seconds if you pause and retry, versus waiting, but it's up to you. This is definitely easier than the other first cycles I was talking about. And once you get it, pretty much when the clock changes to about... Pretty much right when the clock changes to 53, maybe even a little sooner, you can run off of the platform, bounce once, then the next time you bounce will be on this slanted black part. And then you'll roll up. And it'll save you the time of having to go all the way up the stage. Fortunately, you can also wait a little longer and it makes it even easier. Versus, there's no reason to go to the top of the stage. And if you miss it, Again, just pause and retry, or you can sit here and wait if you just don't want to risk it again. Now here's another strat on the stage. This stage actually has a pause frame. One of the harder ones at that. This one would not be worth it unless you really are going for a world record time, kind of like totalitarianism. This one, you want to pause it. The only frame that works is .55. Another reason why this one is not really recommended, period. Unless you're going for a top time. You get .55, go up right, then you'll clip here, and you have to hit this, like, outside part of the goal. When you hit that, you'll bounce up, pull back, and land in the goal. And I guess I'll do it full speed. Uh, fortunate thing, actually, if you do miss this frame, 
you get point fifty three or fifty one or even fifty maybe you just turn the corner and do the strat normally so it's not the end of the world however if you mess up a pause like let's say and just don't pause again it can well it can lead to disaster but I'll do the strat one more time if I can get the frame there's a lot of runs I don't get the frame it's hard to get a frame when there's only one that works and then kinda like that and just finish it's a little awkward but it is a strat here's domino the easiest way of doing this is the way I recommend just hold up at the beginning you'll hit the switch then you just go around like this to the left or I guess this is the right actually then you just run up here and you finish very easy stage not even sure why this is in world 7 it is very easy if you really wanted to be safe you could even go to the left and I guess the cycles a little easier but it's way slower you could do it going to the right harder strat strat that I've actually done for quite a while now not really anybody else does it but it does save like another second to two seconds if you do it really quick I left wall then sorry it's kinda hard to breathe right now and you like you want to make sure that you actually touch the ground when you're touching the switch also you don't just run into the switch hit the diagonal part and you'll bounce off of it and you'll activate the button what this means is now that I've done that I do this so that I can hit the switch and keep my speed I'll run over these corners bounce off that domino if I have to slow down and then run to the back and what that does is that run already saved maybe around a second to the normal strat and I can sometimes even get it to be like a 53 and sometimes like a mid like 53 if I get a really fast run so it's one of those risky strats that I do just to save extra time not really recommended unless you're going for a super fast time you can't actually do it just holding up the beginning cuz well I mean you can but most of the time if you do it's not gonna save any time you could also even, if you didn't like going to the goal from the back like that, you could even go around the front, swing around the front. But at that point, you might as well just do the normal strat. Again, I wouldn't really recommend this, but it's one that exists, and it's one that I do. So I thought I'd mention it. I guess now I have to beat the stage to move on. Wow. Maybe I shouldn't do this strat anymore. I just got so used to it, I always do it now. I mean, it does save time. Civ, if you take this slow, it's pretty easy. Go fast, it can be a little tricky. So you want a left wall or a right wall, the direction you go here does not matter. And take it kind of slow, there's no reason to rush this super bad. And if you want to be really safe, you can wait this cycle out, because if you try to go while these things come along, you will get smacked off the stage. But if you want to wait for those, then start going. All you got to do is center yourself on this platform, kind of use like the lines on the stage or like the outsides of the ball for reference. If you're really slow and want to be extra safe, you can wait for that. It comes at about 38.50. And that is the slowest cycle. I mean, there are slower cycles than that, but if you want to be safe, you could even wait for that and still not have to wait at the end. Now, let's do the faster cycle. The faster cycle basically involves you doing this without waiting, which, again, means you have to do that without much time to adjust to keep yourself in the middle. So as long as you're quick, it's pretty easy, but sometimes it can be a little tricky if you're not used to it. So that's really all there is to explain there. There is, again, another super fast YOLO strat that I do that saves like another four seconds, but I would never recommend unless you're going for a top time. I'm the only one who does this, period, I'm pretty sure. It involves you going to the side like that and getting a hit and then slowing down. And I usually even pause buffer it because it's very, very difficult to pull off RTA. Because usually I could get it without pausing, but getting it every single time, no problem, is another story. 
but it does save a significant amount of time. But again, I would never recommend that, again, unless you're going to go beat the world record anytime soon. If you are, I'll go for it. The world record doesn't even use it. Here we go, we're at flock. This is the big pause frame strat. You don't have to use a pause frame on a single level this entire run, except for here. Because this one, if you do it normally, you will lose over 30 seconds. Assuming that you can do this in at least a couple tries. So, let me show you both frames. I'm going to show you the good one first. This is the frame, the frame that's been around for a decade. Which is point sixty one. This was like the original pause strat. What you do is you get point sixty one, you hold up. Simple as that, right? The only other thing you gotta do? Get around right here. Maybe like as you're t getting on this platform, you just pull back right. How early you're late early or late you are on that depends on whether you'll hit the top of the goal or whether you'll go right in the tape. One mistake that even a lot of runners right now do is they actually do this strat. But I'm not sure exactly. I can't remember how to do it this way. But this is the way a lot of people do it. And what they do is, I mean, this works too. Don't get me wrong, it works. But it is like two seconds slower. And they'll hit the top of the goal like that and roll in. But if you know how to set this up properly... And the only difference is you gotta pull back a little sooner. And it's back right at that. It's not just plain back. It's it's back right. Pull back right around here. You might party ball. Or most of the time you'll go right into the tape if you pull back right at the right time. And when once you get the clip, you just switch to just back and adjust from there. See? Pretty simple. Really fast strat. This only works on NTSC, unfortunately, so for PAL players, there is another strat that involves waiting an extra two seconds doing this really awkward pause strat that's not, like, it involves using two pauses. It sucks. Um, this isn't a PAL tutorial, but that does exist. So, sorry about that. But yeah, that is the .61 frame. I guess I'll do it one more time. Again, this is another thing where the pausing comes in handy, because trying to pause pause very difficult. A lot of a thing a lot of runners do, and I even did for a while until I learned how to pause buffer the right way. At least for uh, doing strats like this. Well, that worked. That was a weird goal. What the heck? Is that a glitch goal? Yes, it was. All right. Now the point sixty frame. This one is weird. But it also works, it's just as consistent as the other one if you know how to do it. Because it is a little weird, and you do have to do an extra input. All that extra input is, is right when you hit that platform, you just nudge left for like, like less than 0.1, like a very small nudge. And you'll barely get on that block because of it. And then you just do the same input at the end, which I don't know why it didn't work. You just do the back right just the same, except something different will happen. You will not get that nice low clip that you get on point .61. You will get kind of a gross looking high clip that will give you, instead of a mid 51, you'll get like a high 50. Let me show it off. It's really hard to do this when I try to slow it down in places I'm not usually slowing it down at. So again, right whenever you bounce the second time, which I guess I'm turning too soon, you want to nudge left for a very short amount of time. And that's how you do the point sixty frame. It's something nice to use, because again, if you have two frames on the strat, it makes it much more consistent than only using one. One frame strats are very inconsistent. Just look at Flock. Or Flock. Well, this is Flock. Look at a uh, Obstacle. And then that's the kind of hit you get at the end. So all you gotta do is just keep holding back right. And then you can finish. It's not too bad. The ending isn't the problem. It's the... Uh, it's the actual nudge to the left that gets a lot of people. Because if you don't nudge to the left, you just die. So that's all there is to it. It's not as scary as some people make it out to be, but you do definitely have to go into it knowing what to do. Double Spiral. This one 
is actually, if you just do the normal not fast cycle, it is very easy. You boost really any way you want, doesn't matter, because you're going to have to slow down anyway. All you do is wait for this little platform, and do the stage normally. Simple as that. Not too hard of a stage. Bam. Then, if you don't want to, you want to go fast. You want to go fast. You can do a 10-second skip, which I guess um, all the cycles in this world, like most of them, are like 10 seconds. But on this one, it's really inconsistent. It's another weird uh, collision. Can definitely get you on this one. But if you can pull this off, you do save about 10 seconds of the normal strat. What you do is, okay, there are multiple ways to do this. First way is just a normal left frame boost. Then right wall, left wall. And those are really bad walls, so this is not going to work. So, right wall, left wall. You have to get kind of normal-ish walls for this to work, if you do it this way. Which is the reason I don't boost this way, but some people do. And you kind of have to bounce along like that. Or I guess maybe if I do a bigger frame boost? I don't know, I'm not used to doing it this way. You gotta bounce. Oh man, this is this is really bad. I'm so sorry, guys. So, I'm gonna try to get this at least once. Usually bounce about three times. And then you land over on the side and slow down. This is really hard to get used to, for sure. Once you get used to it, you do save 10 seconds, so it's a nice skip to learn. But it is kind of difficult, and it is... I mean, it's difficult and inconsistent. Do the way I do. I do a left wall, then a right wall. And depending if my two wall boosts were really fast, then I'll do a very weak last wall. If they were really slow, I'll do a really good last wall, or at least I'll try to. That way, it kind of helps with the walls sometimes not working out. It's, uh, I don't know why more people don't do that, but it's it's just a way to kind of uh, know what to do with the walls. Because you don't actually want three super solid walls, otherwise you'll be going too fast. So you just do the strat like normal. Sometimes you're going to bounce like that and you just can't make it. Sometimes, you, you guys, I was like rolling instead of bouncing already, so this is kind of slow. But it can still be made, again, assuming you get good collision. Sometimes the collision really screws you over. And sometimes, sometimes, what can happen is you'll get a really high bounce right there. And if that happens, you actually have to bounce on the very edge. Like, you'll be, like, up there on the very edge. And that will be the only way you can make it. Otherwise, you'll die. And that does happen sometimes. Not every time, but it does happen a fair amount. And it's very unfortunate. But like that, that's it. And I failed it. It's very difficult. This strat also can be done from the top, but the difference is, is you actually have to bounce on the edge. That's actually what the the uh, IL or the score IL does. You have to go on the top like that. But uh, that's a pretty good representation of the strat. You can also go full speed and get the goal while it's upside down, but obviously that's not something you do in runs. So that's that stage. Hierarchy has a few options. Normal option being, get on one of the walls, doesn't matter which side, start running, and fall. Try to land on the bottom platform. And you can use the insides of the, of the I guess the things like the, the walls, to keep yourself from falling out, and you just roll in. You could do it easier than that if you really needed to. I'm not really sure exactly what you do. But you could like seriously just like one by one. Yeah, I'd recommend learning the fast strat. Get on the wall. Go until about 56 and then just jump off. That's the nice ah, that's the nice safe easy way of doing it even though it can still be tricky. But, make sure that when you get down there, that you do run into this, because that will help you live. 
and it's not that bad. Now there's a few other variations. There's a really hard variation that I used to do that involves... I'm going to try to pull it off. It's not something I ever use anymore, but it was a strat I did use to use. That, so I can roll in quicker. And there's also the strat that I usually use sometimes, depending on if I feel I'm up to it, where you just bounce like that and land in. Those two are both very hard, not recommended unless you're going for a world record time. But they do exist. And they're not the easiest strats in the world. But yeah, the general strat is to just do that. Eight bracelets. This one's fun because of the walls. Normal way of doing this. We're just going to do this the normal way. Which is, you don't have to get the red goal, so you don't have to go super high up on these rings. But just going across the rings generally fast is a normal way of beating this. Or, you could also do something else, which is usually what I'll do if I miss the bat, like the main strat, you can do this at the beginning. Skip like the first two rings essentially, because all you do is bounce on them one time. Saves like another second or two. So here's the fast strat. You have a few options. You can do... Let's see what are the options here. I guess maybe left wall, or right wall. And you can try to roll off of that wall and get down there. That's pretty hard, wouldn't recommend it. What I do is I do a right frame boost, left wall, and then here. I'll pause here, but for a good reason. The collision here is unpredictable. Sometimes you'll get a hit far back to the left, sometimes you'll get a hit well over the wall, sometimes you'll just get hit right on the wall like you want. And I need to pause here so I can actually see what's happening, and then I, you know, go forth with the strat. Because if I get on the wall, even though that barely worked. And oh my god! Oh my gosh! That actually worked. I know exactly what I'm going for. Get on the wall. Sometimes I don't even get on the wall, but I can still make it. Which is another nice thing about pausing. Which, I mean, it sucks you have to do that, but it does make it more consistent. And then, of course, since the gold doesn't matter, you get the green, blue, red, doesn't really matter. I guess I do want to show an attempt at what it looks like when I actually get on the wall. And that's getting on the wall. It's the easiest way of getting it. Then there is, of course, getting it without the wall, which I've already done already. Which, um, I guess maybe I won't be showing. I'm trying to show it just once without the wall again. You can still kind of use your speed to roll against that. It might help to pause it a little bit. It's not, it's just weird. It's inconsistent. The pausing only helps for the the inconsistency. Sorry about that. So it just comes down to the inconsistencies of pausing. I guess the inconsistencies of not pausing, because the wall collision is just not consistent, and it sucks. And I need to get it one more time so I can move on to the next level. And quick turn. Nice, easy way to end off the stage. Literally all you do here, fast strat, everything. Hold up. That's all you gotta do. Literally the easiest stage in the run. Okay, 
Okay, so now we're on World 8. This world is where everything's really get difficult. I have a few strats here. One strat I've seen a lot of people do. It's going... I'm going to try that again. I've seen some people definitely do this strat, though, where it doesn't really matter which side you go. But they go, like, right here. And I'm still not setting up that right. Go forward like that, and then they start running along here. And going like that. That's the easiest way of going about it. I think it doesn't really matter which side you go. You just want to wait on the second banana, and then go. And then turn, and go. That's an easy way of doing it. Now here's the faster way that's pretty much just as easy, but no one does. All you gotta do is go twice, and then instead of continuing to go forward, turn this way, and then turn. And for some, it's, it's faster. It's a lot, it, you save like a second doing this. In fact, sometimes you'll even make it too early. Just turn, and you get a 49. So, I mean, it works. Now, there's an even harder strat that I would never recommend, and I go as a YOLO strat sometimes, so it's running on the complete outside, because you can dodge everything if you're quick enough. If you're too slow, you will get hit. But you can get a 50 or a 51 doing this, versus a 49. So it is very quick, but not recommended. I don't even do this in most runs. But it is a strat that exists, and it just looks kind of cool. Because the outer platform is actually like twice as thin as all the other ones. Which is why it's so much harder. So I would recommend going two bananas down, then turning. And then going until there's no more bananas in front of you and turning again. That's what I would recommend doing. Soft green. I think there actually are, aren't there pause frames to do this, like holding up? Yes, there are. So it's like 85 and maybe 86, and possibly something else. But if you pause at those frames, which I don't do this obviously, but you can hold up, and then as soon as you hit this turn, or, um, never mind. We'll work on this one. Turn and you can get over pretty cleanly, except for that time. It's just a nice, easy way of doing it. In challenge mode, you can hold up without the pause, but in story mode, that doesn't work. The button gets pressed. But what I do is I go on this outer left wall. Yes, the left wall matters more. It's, uh, it helps with the angle. It also helps with when I go over here that I don't press any buttons. And then I basically, from that point, try to do the same strat that I showed off with the pause frame without a pause frame, and it can be a little tricky, for sure, it can definitely be a little tricky, but the way I, I, I get on the wall at the beginning, most other people don't do that, I feel like that actually helps it a lot, if you get on that wall, something else you can always do too, press like the fast forward button or something, and then do the stage, but it's pretty slow, wouldn't recommend doing that, unless you really just can't do any other strat, I guess, but that's that stage, momentum, Stage is actually a lot easier than you might think. If you wait like a second and a half or so, maybe like a, sec a second and a quarter, and just go, it's pretty easy. No boosting or anything. It's pretty easy. You just go over here, and then when this thing comes down, just switch sides. It comes down again, switch sides. That's all there is to it. Faster strat, you right frame boost get on the left wall, kind of clip that for extra speed, and then finish the stage like normal, and that does save like an extra like second and a half. It's what I do and some other people do, but it is definitely a considerable amount uh, harder. I've messed that up, especially doing that. I've messed that up plenty of time in runs. The reason you have to get that clip though is I'll show you right now what happens if you actually don't get that clip, or you get one that's too small. You might not make it, or even worse than that, you just, well, yeah, you don't make it. Basically, that's what would happen. So I would recommend just doing the weight strat. It saves, it loses like a second and a half over this one, but it's so easy.
Oh wait, did I hit retry? What happened? I don't even remember. Tangle pad, this is the stage. This is the stage that gives so many people trouble. And you just... There's no real easy way to get past this. Like, there is, but you have to wait so long to do it. I would not recommend doing blue gold, period. It is just much too slow. Another strat you could do, though, that is still pretty slow, is pressing that fast forward button. And I guess going down, like... Maybe, like, three steps or so, maybe four and waiting for this platform to kind of go over the green goal. And then, oh, I fell off the wrong side. I probably should have fallen off the other side. I'm just kind of landing on the platform and then rolling in. Wouldn't recommend it, but if you really just cannot do this strat period, it's kind of like Arthropod. Like, a lot of people would probably just skip this and glitch because it's just too hard, even if it's not that slow. You also don't have to press the fast forward button either. It's just a way of making this not super slow. Okay, well... Maybe you should press the fast forward button. Or shouldn't. Something else you could do, is if you wanted to pay attention, is press the fast forward button. Then when it gets like a little farther, press play. Then I guess just wait it out. At this point, you might just want to do blue goal. I pressed the switch way too early, and I'm just starting to realize that now. Just... Yeah, it's pretty slow. Okay. I wouldn't recommend that, but that is a strat. Another strat... Press pause fast forward button. You can keep it on fast forward button, but if you're skilled enough to do this on all fast forward button, then you should be doing green goal. But wait for it to get kind of close to straight it's going it's going it's going okay it's a little close play and now run and do the stage you have a lot more time to do this than you think make sure you pull back but you have a lot of time to do that but look how much so you get a 27 first if you do this green goal strat right you can get like a 54 so here's what you do you get on the right wall then you gotta land on this platform, or I guess a little forward or behind it, whatever. Bounce once and land right in the tape. And not only do you have to practice, you know, landing in a goal again, it's also at a very awkward angle. But this saves a lot of time. And I mess it up myself a decent amount. It's not an easy strat. It is certainly not an easy strat, but it saves a lot of time. So it is definitely recommended that you can practice this and pull this off. So there's not really much else to say about it. It just it takes practice. Do your best to try to get this if you can. If you can't you can do it slower, but it loses almost 30 seconds. It's like not doing flock with pause frames. It's not something you should ever be doing. Totters. Now we're on to an easy stage. All you do here is you can boost either way, it doesn't really matter. You just bounce. And on the second one, the second totter, if you try to land over on the left like this, you can actually bounce over the third one. It's pretty nice. Or you can not even do that and just kind of slowly do the ending. But it's not that hard to do the little faster ending either just doing that. It's the strat I usually do. And there is, however, an even faster way of bouncing on these walls, which unfortunately is pretty difficult. It does save a little bit of time, like a fraction of a second, that's it. But it is a little bit faster. Not, re I wouldn't recommend it. It does lose. Um, you'll, you're much more apt to die. Actually, I'm missing this. Yeah, so it's something like that. I wouldn't recommend it. I think you can do it on this side, too. But it's a little different. Okay, never mind. Don't do it on that side. Either way, the strat I recommend is just doing bounce, and then try to bounce over that last one if you can. And if you can't, whatever. It's not that much slower. Vortex. Easy. 
E okay, no, actually a lot of people have trouble with this sometimes. All I gotta do press this, and I just wait for this one to pass, then press that switch. All that does is make it getting on this a little quicker. Then you wanna hold back right, switch between back no switch between back right and oh wait, right, what am I saying? Switch between back left and left. And all you gotta do is get the blue goal here. So it's pretty easy. So. Wait a minute. That's not the right switch, is it? Wait a minute. Or I guess it's that switch. I'm gonna go faster. But yeah, just back right, let go, back. I'm sorry. I keep saying right. You just let go, back left, let go, back left. Alternate between let go, back left, and left. That's all you gotta do. The inputs aren't as weird as you would think. And of course, there is a pause strat here. Pretty hard, wouldn't recommend unless you're going for a super fast run, but it does save like 7 seconds or so if you get it. Optimally, you gotta do .93 going up left, then hold up, and then you have .25 or .23 to hold up right. And then just kind of maneuver your way into the goal. 23 and 25 are a little different, but they're both pretty much just the same difficulty. The hard part really is getting that .93 frame, but usually if I get that, I can usually get these last two. You can improvise a different frame sometimes, but it's kind of scary, honestly, if you miss 93 and 90, or 23 and 25, you might just want to just hit retry. But really, if you are going for this strat, this is, this is the hard strat. Most of the paw strats in this run are strats that you wouldn't want to go for unless you're going for a really top time, minus like flock and coin slots. Because most of them are just like for little saves. Like this one. But this one does save a decent amount. Not a warp. A lot of people have trouble with this one. I never really understood why because I never did have really trouble with this one even when I was younger. All you gotta do is what I do is I get on this wall and then jump off a little early so I can have a good angle to run through that first section without slowing down. And all you gotta do, hold them back left right now, and then until I'm angled upward-ish, or at least forward, and then just alternate between, kind of alternate between up left and up, or kind of like my joystick kind of hovers around that area, and now I'm like kind of between, like I'm going up right, and then when it looks like I'm starting to go too far for the bump bumpers, I'll flick to up, and then back to up right. Like, I guess it would be nice to have a controller cam for this stuff. For this one, don't have to do any of that. And I'm going I'm going up left, except for when it looks like I'm going too close to the bumpers, I'll switch to up again. Like, I'll kind of flick over to up. That's what it looks like, the flicking. But it's pretty easy. And of course, there is a way to save yourself. If you feel like you're starting to fall down a little bit, like you're kind of heading off the edge, you can still save it. Although it might be a little slow, you can save it. Let's say... Ooh, I'm starting to fall. I just keep holding. You just keep holding back right until it, the camera flips around, and then just continue the up, right, up sequence. Trampolines is easy. Obviously, you could just beat this normally if you wanted, but there's a little trick. If you just hold up, and then right now hold up left or up right, like about right now, you'll actually clip up oh, like pretty much every time. That'll, that'll be consistent. And you can skip a little bit of a cycle. And then time that last run up so you can get to the goal a little quicker. It's pretty easy, works on both sides. Of course, if you didn't want to do that, you could just wait and just do that first cycle normally, but... Now the faster strat, which kind of sucks sometimes. I always do this on the right, although I'm assuming this also works on the left. Don't really have a visual cue for this, I kind of guess. At about like 58.5 I turn, and then turn back again. 
and then try to hit that, and if you do it right, you should get like a clip. But if you do it wrong, maybe I'm turning too soon. I am. I wait closer to like 20 to 58 point like five. And that's what it looks like. There's actually two ways of doing that ending. Is you get it, play it safe, you're done. Yeah, you got it. So you just land and you do the last cycle normally. Good job. Congratulations. Now, if you want to try to save more time, like, because, yeah, that's a good strat. That's what I did for the longest time. Then I found out if you do some weird maneuvering in the air, like you get hit, and again, this is not something you probably even want to bother with until you have a really good time. But if you hit and you kind of swerve in the air a little bit, then pull back, like you swerve, like, up left, up right, and then start pulling back around there, you can actually get hit as soon as you land and get, the, like, an earlier cycle. Like, if you try to, like, look at what I'm doing here, you, can kind of, you might be able to kind of tell. But it is definitely a little tricky. And you don't have to do that. You can just as easily just... the normal cycle for that fast strat. But it's something that I've been doing kind of recently, and it does save like an extra second and a half, so. Or again, you can just do the strat normally. That other strat's kind of tricky and sometimes doesn't work, so. But it does exist if you ever want to use it. This strat, unlike challenge mode, we have to wait a second at the beginning. This one, you just immediately start going. You left a wall boost, then get off the wall, obviously. Then you just run through this all in one go. Then you have two options here. You can slow down, slowly go around it, finish. Or you can do another strategy, which is the one I use, and the collision's consistent pretty much most of the time. You just kind of slow down, clip. It's not that hard. It's actually probably the most consistent clip strat like that I do. One of the most consistent, like it just works, even though I don't have like the same setup going into it ever, but it just works. And that's all there is to that stage. And of course, another easy stage to end off the world, because most of these stages that ends off the world are not normally an expert, they're a beginner, so. Pretty easy, just boost, slow down at the end, finish. Nothing to it, you can boost either way, it doesn't matter. And just finish the stage. Now we're in world nine, we're making progress, and we're still under three hours. Did not expect that to take this long when I started. So here we are. A serial jump. All you gotta do here... Well, there's a few options, actually. You could... Um, what am I doing? Go around like this. Do the blue goal. This is like the normal way of doing the blue goal. If you really don't feel like jumping on the red goal. It's pretty easy. You know, you just go, you actually right frame boost, left wall, and make sure you go onto the right side of the ring. And you just go in. Reason you don't want to do it the other way, I'll show you. Well, I think you got the point. And honestly, if you're going to go through the trouble of trying to land right in the goal, it's probably easier for you to just <laughs> do this goal, which is the actual strat. Which, there's, I mean couple ways to do this. The way I do it is I just right frame boost and then go. Let go a little bit there because sometimes you can get like a little random bump and you'll hit that top ring which would suck. So I let go for like a split second and just kind of hold up and then you just adjust. Another reason you want to practice falling levels, this one in particular actually is easier than a lot of other ones. It's easier than free fall I think. But it is not a hard strat. And it's pretty cool once you can start getting it. And plus, it's getting the red goal, too, so, I mean, it's even cooler. Cross floors. This one can suck if you get stuck in it. If you get stuck in the middle of the stage, you're pretty much dead. What you do is you right frame boost left wall, and just make sure you don't get stuck. Because you get stuck in this level, there's really no recovering. So what you want to do is just stay up high, and then switch down. Like, when you get to the end of the platform, switch to the other direction. You can go for clips and stuff, but it is risky. Because again, you don't want to get stuck, or like, because if you get stuck...
you can recover out of it. But it's kind of like warp, you know? You get stuck and it's kind of slow and kind of difficult to get out of it. You could easily be dead. But he's, honestly, the strat's not that hard. You just beat the stage normally. Nothing to it. I mean, yeah, I mean, there's just nothing to this. You just alternate between up right and up left. And then, of course, you could, if you really want to save some time, go for some crazy clips. Just like that. I'll actually save that. I don't even know how... Oh. Hold on. What's the record on that? I guess this is story mode. That was really fast. Oh, never mind. That wasn't even close. I just thought that was really fast. I was like, what the heck? That looked fast to me. I was like, whoa. That was quick. Alright. Anyways. Let's move on. Spinning saw, easy. Just want a right frame boost, left wall, right wall. Slow down at the end, land on the tape. Pretty easy. You want to pull back, because if you don't, you'll. Yeah. There's nothing else to talk about here. Okay, so this strat, pretty easy again. You could frame boost, but I find it more consistent to just not, because sometimes you can get too far. So, you don't need a frame boost. I just go right wall, left wall. And then, when you land here, you want to make sure you're aiming for the left side of the half pipe. The left, oh, I have my directions messed up right now, dude. You aim for the right side of the half pipe. Not the left. Because you aim for like the middle of the left, you could not make it sometimes. You aim for the right to get that extra air time. So, that's really all there is there. World 9 is actually pretty easy in comparison to the other worlds around this part of the run. This stage, though, can be tricky. Flat maze. You could just hold up. And there's a stupid strat. Oh, wait, never mind. That's only on challenge mode. Um, you hold up. You kind of turn a little bit. You bounce, and you just try to land right in. You don't want to bounce or anything else before. You just want to land right in the goal. That's really the only way of doing this. Like, when I do it, I actually frame boost to the left and then boost one, or wall boost, but I don't do more than that. Otherwise, you could hit that. Which, obviously, is not something that you want to do. Yeah, that's all you gotta do. I can show you a little bit of an easier way if you're not ready for that strat yet. If you like um, a fast path, one way is like go up here like this, and then I'd say right here, skip across. Skip across here too. Might as well skip across there too. That first thing I skipped across though was the important one. You can still go around and get like a 30 something. Kinda slow, but it exists. Bit of a faster approach that's slightly more difficult. It's still going the normal way. Is you stay on this platform, you don't clip there. Keep going. And right here, try to clip across there. And you can get a 40 something. But it's a little trickier than just running and clipping across the other one. But honestly, just doing it the fast way is probably the best way you can do it. I'd recommend just learning that and trying to practice it, it is a little tricky, but you will get better over time. Guillotine can, is very easy, I feel like. If you don't do any of the skips, it's a very easy stage, as long as you know what you're doing. You can boost there, you can not boost there, it doesn't really matter. What I do, if I'm not doing any skips, I just kind of take it slow, make sure to leave myself some room so I can actually run up these hills, because if you're too close to the hills, you just won't be able to run up them, you won't be able to get enough speed. And here, 
want to give yourself extra time, just jump off the side of the end. So, obviously what I mean about the giving yourself room for the hills is I'll show you. So let's say I'm trying to go up a hill from right here with no speed. I think that's all you need to know. That's uh, that pretty much self-explanatory. Where that could become a problem is let's say I get in here and I'm like, ooh, gotta wait, okay. Let's go! Yeah. You want to make sure you leave yourself some room. Now if you want to do skips, single skip is not too difficult. A lot of people do single skip, like right there. You skip one cycle, and then do the rest like normal. Double skip is a little harder. It's what I do. It's not impossible, but it is a little more difficult. And I'll show that off right now. It's just a little tighter. You'll be right there, early enough, then you gotta be early enough to do that. That's the double skip. Gets like 44s if you make it. And not die at the end. But of course, you can take your time and not do any cycle skips. The cycles only save like two and a half, three seconds, something like that. So if you don't do either of them, you'll lose like five or six seconds. Not the worst thing in the world. Corkscrew. As long as you take an easy setup, corkscrew is very simple. Right frame boost, left wall. Right frame boost, left wall. And then you jump off the side and start rolling. And then you just want to slow down here and then run into that, right in this spot. And then go kind of slow. And then when you're here, just kind of hold back left pretty safe. It's a pretty slow run, but it's all you gotta do for a nice and consistent easy way of doing it. Of course you can do it faster and get a 44. Usually what you'd get doing this strat. Slow down, make sure you hit right there. Then around here you start pulling back left. There you go. Now if you go from this side, there is an actual even faster strat. You can do get 45s. And it involves you rolling up over that hole. You have to roll over that hole. You have to have a lot of speed. And then you just keep pulling back at the end, back left, and boom, 45. It's pretty risky. It's actually not super risky, but it is a little difficult. But it does save some time if you want to ever learn that. Fortunately, it's not, I mean, you can mess it up, but it's not the most difficult thing in the world. And it gets significantly faster times. There is actually another fast 45 strat that is more difficult. Or wait, you do it the other way. I think. Hold on, I'm gonna try to do it once. This is another way to get a 45, but it is more difficult. It's the way I did it for a little while. Okay, you do go the other way. You go this way. At least I think. Oh my gosh, that's the hard part. The hard part is actually getting around that thing. It's like in between like the two strats. I'm so sorry guys. I'm really not this bad, I promise. I guess I just haven't done this in a while. Okay, you know what? You know what? I don't even know why I'm trying to show that strat. It's literally like the same speed as the other one I just did, and it's harder. So I don't know why I'm trying to show this off. I guess I just want to show you what it looks like. I don't remember how to do it. Okay, this should be it. There you go. And on this one, you actually go a lot faster at the end and slower at the beginning. And if you do it right, you go flying into the goal. But I don't know why I wasted two minutes doing that. The optimal strat is doing this and going over this top part. And then getting kind of a slower ending. Or a safer ending. Because you still get a really fast time. Orbiters. Nice, easy level. 
Don't boost or anything here. Just kind of hold up. Kind of maybe drift over to the right a little bit. Here, slow down a tiny bit so you don't bounce. And just roll in. Simple as that. If you don't slow down, you will bounce, though. Which, uh... Can lead you into some trouble. Or maybe not. That's really all there is to it. Twin Basin. Um, obviously, you can take this pretty safe. Let's see a left frame boost, right wall. You can just go through it kind of slowly, but fast at the same time. Or, you could try to do what most people do. They'll try to get like a little clip right here. So you can kind of go through that part pretty fast, and then just do the ending kind of normally. Which, that's, that's what most people do, is they'll do that. It's not too hard. That clip is very consistent, so... Sometimes you get a bad clip, but usually you always get a clip. Or you can do the strat that I do. Which is... It's, uh, I guess, uh, you do a lot of rolling along the half pipes. Which, uh, I w I'm not getting good clips right now, but... You do that, roll off that half pipe, roll off that half pipe finish with like a mid 53 or better or worse or whatever. It is harder though. The second part's what makes it harder. But honestly, I would recommend some kind of in between. Like this isn't that risky. And then just doing the ending kind of normally. That's a pretty solid in between way to do it. Unless you want to learn the fastest strat and if you can do it, you can do it. That's awesome too. Okay, easy. Easy, 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 easy. Watch this, watch this. Let go. First try. All you gotta do, hold up. And like pretty much as soon as you land on the stage, like maybe a couple frames later, you let go. And first try. Super easy. It's really all there is to it. Challenge mode, you do something slightly different, but in story mode, it's super easy. It's all you gotta do. So, there are, there's like even pause frames here, I'm pretty sure. But honestly, it'd be kind of pointless to use those in story mode, especially. Challenge mode could be nice because you save lives if you need them. Honestly, there are pause frames. I'm not even going to do There's just no reason you should ever do pause frames here. Just. I mean, what are they? 78, one of them? You like pause at 78 and then hold up? Yeah, that is. So there's that. Or again, this is the easy strat. Please, this is so easy. Just let go. Every time. Finally to world 10. Hopefully this one doesn't take too long. First level, very easy, fortunately. These are all exclusive stages, none of them are expert. All you gotta do, right wall there, and then just run along the second fattest path, kinda like on wavy option. And then when you get here, you can jump off to the side. And go into the goal. Kind of like several other stages, you can go for clips if you're feeling feeling pretty cocky, feeling pretty confident. Kind of hard to get though. You can try to go for a clip. What is it like right here? You can try to go for a clip. I actually don't even really know if that saves time to be honest. I'm sure it would if you got like a really low one, but not easy. Okay, next stage. There actually is really only one strat to this. Like, you can do the IL strat, which maybe I could, like, pause my way through it. Like, it's, uh... Okay, what am I doing? What you do is you, like, right there, clip, and you land on that other side. That's the IL strat. No one does that in runs, period. What I do is I left wall, or I guess you can right wall go here. Go to this side. This is beating the stage normally. The only strat here is you can you hit that button. I go to the back to get some speed. And start going. The only strat here is just going fast and clipping corners. Which is usually what I try to do. Like I try to cut these edges, but you can take them as fast or as slow as you need. Obviously I do them a little faster than normal, but... There is some really overcomplicated paw strat to actually do the IL, but no one really does that. It's like, it involves you like doing some strat or something to clip off that edge, then clip off that edge, and then land. It's really hard. 
but it does save a little bit of time, but no one actually uses it because it's like three frames. Guillotine also actually has a pause strat for doing the IL that also no one does and runs. That uses three different frames and it gives you the IL. Which, if you didn't know on Guillotine, involves you clipping up and getting hit by those spinning things into the golf. Pretty cool. It's insane. Oh my gosh. I don't know why I'm spending so much time on this. And then you just go in the front of the goal, it's the easiest. Mountain? Have a handful of strats you can do here. Strat I do is probably the easiest one. Hold up. Maybe a couple frames after you get off the stage, hold directly left. Not up left, not down left. Just. Yeah, not down left or up left, just, just left. And you just finish. Super simple, super consistent. Or you could always try to boost and try to do something kind of improvised to save more time. Some people do it, it only ends up saving like 0 0.1 or 2 if you actually manage to pull it off. But it's not consistent. Again, this is like the most consistent strat. I'm actually not sure what most people do on this. I think they go for run strats and stuff. Like, you could do that, like, it works fine. It's just so much riskier. Plus, at the end of the run, do you really want to risk it all on mountain? You know. But yeah, that's that's the easiest strat. Disorder. You have a couple choices. Choices. Yeah. You uh. That. That's like the easiest one. Like you should not do anything slower than that. You literally just run off, bounce there, bounce here, and then just finish the stage like normal. Which for a while was the normal strat. Or you can do this where you actually frame boost to the right, bounce on this one time, then bounce here one time, then finish, which is the strat I usually do. And it's a little trickier because again you have to land right in the goal. Then there's an even faster strat, which is very risky and I don't go for most of the time. You can do that and it saves like another like point two, which involves yeah left wall and then just bouncing one time and then in. That was lucky I didn't die, but oh wait, I didn't finish the stage. I actually finished the stage. Ready? 3D maze. This one gets a lot of people. And I can see why. So first, I'm going to show you the normal way. Because this is the way... You should probably do it, if you just honestly cannot do the fast track. I would recommend trying to learn the fast trap, but if you can't do it, you can't do it. So you get on here, and you just jump, wait, what am I doing? So you stay back here, actually. There's no point in running up just yet. And then when you get to about this point, you can run down and jump down there. And you want to be down here. And you want to just sit here. And then whenever this gets to about kind of flat like this, just clip over to the goal. There's zero reason why you should ever do a strat slower than that, because that one is very easy. Super simple, and yeah, there's no reason to ever do a slower. Like, I think... What happens if you do wait? Like, and it's so easy to just run and just make that. If you wait a little longer, you can end up doing it like this. But it's just, it's just wasted time. 
Now here's the actual fast trap, which is really hard. No, it's actually like not super hard. So you wait about right here. And then like around 57.1, you go. And here's the detail that people miss. You let go. You actually let go for like a fraction of a second. Like you let go barely. Like that. And that's the thing a lot of people miss. And why? Well, it's just not that noticeable. There's another stage, I think I said earlier, that you actually do the kind of the same thing. You let go like for a split second. But really, because if you don't, you can still make it, but there are instances. Well, I guess like maybe if you stay like right here, you might not have to. I mean, I guess you don't really have to let go. Maybe I'm crazy. Sometimes you get that clip, and it doesn't work. Sometimes you go too far, which I'm surprised I can't even manage to make that happen. Why do I let go? Now I'm starting to question my own like motives, and what I do in these runs. I guess if you like wait back here, yeah, you don't bounce again. If you wait farther back, you want to like let go, but if you wait like right here and then go, I guess you don't really need to let go. No, you don't need to. I don't know why I always thought you needed to. Wow. Wow. Can't believe I... Wow. I just, I, I just don't know what to say. Anyways. It could be a little safer. You like let go like slightly, because all that does is assure that you won't roll off the edge of the platform. You also want to make sure you're staying to the left, because obviously if you're too far to the right, you will hit that platform and you will not make it. Because obviously if you go too far to the right, not fun things happen. It's going to wait for just the right time. just go. You just bounce and go on the goal. I mean, I learned something, man. I, I've always been letting go there. Like, for this whole time, I've been doing that. But I guess it doesn't actually make that much of a difference. Huh. Imagine that. No, but yeah, you could go farther back, like here. Then letting go would definitely be more necessary. You can like let go a little bit so you don't roll too far. In fact, that might still make it a little easier because the the platform would be a little bit more flat. But yeah, this is generally the setup. And of course, you don't go all the way far back. You really you're like right here. Like you're seriously like right there. Like a little bit past like where you would roll on is where you're at. And you just clip. It's not that difficult. You can do it. This stage, you also get a few options. Regardless, you want to write wall boost, go through here, and then here's where the options come in. You can run across this and hope you make it. It's not consistent. I would not recommend it. But it is a strat, and it does save a little bit of time over the consistent method. You could, of course, beat this normally, which is, you wouldn't want to go around like that, but if the normal path, I'll actually do a run doing the normal path. Which some people probably don't even know this, but there is one path that actually just goes through this entire stage without skipping anything. And that involves going under here, going along here, around here, up here, up here. Whoops, I took a wrong turn. Over here. I'm getting lost. Huh. Maybe there isn't one right way to beat this stage. I've been lying to myself this whole dude. I'm I'm discovering new things today. This is insane. I'm really like 
I swear there was one path that you can take and it will just beat the stage. Oh well, yeah, there is. What am I doing? You never, I'm just going to show the easy path real quick. There is one path I know, and I think you actually do skip over something. Yeah, I guess there is not- OH MY GOSH! I guess there is like one- there is no one straight path through this level, that's really weird. I always thought there was. Except I just never took it. Whenever I was younger, I found my own way of beating this stage. Like, this is pretty much the slowest method of beating this stage. Just following the same path as me, which I've done it so many times, you should probably have it memorized at this point. Oh my gosh! Dude, I'm so sorry. I'm not trying to do this. I'm not trying to make this as long as possible. I'm really not. Trust me, I don't want to play this anymore. This tutorial has taken a lot of energy out of me. Okay, here's what I did. I remember now. Here's what I did. I would climb up here. Then I would use my speed to go over here. And then you're pretty much already at the end of the level. Once you go up here, up here, then you have this awkward little corner you have to get around, and you're done. Now there's another way that's pretty much just as difficult as that. Pretty much the same difficulty, and it's way faster. You don't have to go around that corner like that, but what you do is you go back here, go up that a little bit, gain some speed, and get over that corner. And I went too far. All that does is make it more consistent to go over this edge, because like I said, you can run over that, but that doesn't actually happen very often. It's inconsistent. Meanwhile, you can just do that. If you get over here, you just go up this path, and down here, and then you're back to where you were before. Still fairly slow. It's like, maybe a little over like 10 seconds slower than the actual run strat. Now the actual run strat, which this one's kind of hard, I would suggest really practicing this, because any other strat is really slow. You go back here, and then you get some speed, then around right here, I guess, you want to like, jump off and hit this edge, or the slant. So you can clip all the way over here. Because then you're already at the end of the level, and you can get a 40 or 39, depending on how fast you are. There's even a faster, faster strat, known as the IL strat, which I'm not going to get into. But this is the run strat. And this is the strat. The once learned is a pretty fast way of beating it. It's the only actual consistent way of beating this with a time bonus. Again, if you do that other strat that I was do talking about, this one, and you actually do manage to clip over with just running over it, that isn't actually too terribly slow. It's like maybe like only at that point like five seconds slower than this one. But that being said, this one actually is probably more consistent than that one, but it takes a little bit more skill. so it's not the easiest. But that's all there is to it. Postmodern, simple enough, beat the stage the normal way. That's really all you do on this one. You can like kind of go around this like this, and then run into this stair so you can clip up this, run into this stair so you can clip up this, keep your speed going up, and then you start rolling up kind of slowly. Absolutely nothing special. Of course, there is like a little bit of a faster strat you could go for. Like, I don't even go for it, but like, it does exist, and I've gone for it before. But it's like, it's not the IL, but it's like, kind of like the half version of it. You go to about right here, and you do that, and actually don't fall off, but that's really hard to do. And most of the time, you don't even get a bounce up to the goal like that. 
but it does save like five seconds or so. Six, seven maybe. But this is the strat I recommend, which is the strat pretty much everyone does. Revolution, also super, super easy unless you do the fast strat. This strat, all you're going to want to do is go right here next to this pole, let yourself lay on it a little bit, and as soon as it starts turning, run of the goal. Super easy. That's really all there is to it. There is another strat you can do. There's one where you do this. And you can actually bounce off of that and then go into the goal. It saves like two seconds. It's kind of cool looking. I used it like once or twice before I found the faster strat. Or, or I didn't really find I just started using it. What the heck? That's actually supposed to be easy. Or easier. Oh no, you wait like the very top. That's why. Without falling out! Okay, maybe... What did I do? I swear. I use a strat and it's like so easy. But then I don't use it for a while and it becomes the hardest thing ever. There you go. That's what it is. I just thought I'd show it off. The strat I use is I wait exactly two seconds. Then I boost. And then I run into this wall. And go back. And land in the goal. And it's actually pretty tricky. But it saves like five seconds. Wouldn't recommend it unless you really, really want to like risk five seconds at the end of a run. Like, if you need to risk it all to get the PB or something, you know, you're like, you, you're like four seconds behind, and all you need is do this five second skip, then yeah, sure, go for it. Otherwise, don't go for it. World record times, dude. Those are the people that go for these kind of strats. They're, they're really, they're, it's hard. It's not, I, like, I'm missing it. You can see me, I'm missing it. It's not consistent. Like, it's not actually that bad, but it's certainly not easy either. I would recommend just doing the normal strat there. Unless you can do the fast one. Here's invisible. Similar thing on here, I guess. There's like a little kind of YOLO thing you can do, like, but right, wait till like 54. Then you can actually like skip that first turn. Which I, at first I'm going to show it the normal way. You want to follow roughly this path if you're going to beat it normally. Try to, I think, the quickest way to do it normally without actually clipping over anything besides maybe like clipping a corner. I have this like memorized, so. Yeah, just copy that. That's the normal strat. Now if you want to try to go for a skip, there is a skip that most runners do. Or not most runners, a lot of runners do. It's not this beginning one. This beginning one's only saves like 3 seconds. This other one though saves like, I don't know, 6 or 7. But what you do on this one is you get like right here, a little some speed, clip. Wow, okay. You're supposed to clip off that. It's kind of hard to do when you can't actually see the platform you're clipping on. So yeah, you're going to line up. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry guys. I want to end this video already. Come on, we're almost there. There we go. And that's how you do it. it saves actually like 8 seconds. Saves a decent amount. I mean, you just try to aim for that edge you clip on, so you skip one part, and then with all your speed, you can actually end up skipping a second part. Like, if you look right there, actually at the stage, let's see if I can get a better look at it. 
the part where like the S end is, you clip off like that S, the bottom of it, and clip over, you're running over the B, and then you clip onto the L, like you skip all that. Meanwhile, there's that one skip that all you do is skip like, whatever that is, I guess that's an I and an N. Looks really weird. I'll try to do a full run of the fastest strats. And again, if you want to do the slow strats, just copy what I did the first time. It's, I think, pretty sure the fastest way to beat it without doing any skips. Yeah, that's the first skip if you can do it. Obviously, it can clip over all this stuff, but it's not consistent whatsoever. Last stage, luckily not a very difficult one as long as you know what you're doing. You can do it with or without the button. Easiest way is without the button, so just boost and don't hit the button, or you can even hold up and you won't hit it. Actually, you, I can't remember if you hit it or not. Do you hit the button when you hold up? Yes, you do. Okay, so don't hold up. Boost left or right, doesn't matter. Clip these edges if you're feeling confident and cocky. Otherwise, don't worry about it. What you're gonna do here? All you're gonna do? Bounce off that V, go around the other side of it, and land, and finish. Simple as that, really. It's it's a pretty simple end of the run. And your run ends whenever you break the gold tape. So I guess I forgot to mention the run starts whenever you enter your name, and then you hit like when it asks like, "Are you ready?" or whatever. Yeah, that's when it starts, and it ends when you break this gold tape, not when you hit stage select. If you're doing story glitch, it, stop, it ends when you hit uh, stage select, skipping the last stage. Just thought I'd point that out. Do this one more time. It's very easy though, of course you can try to risk it, try to land right into the goal. But it is risky. And then there is a strat to do it with the button, which is where you hold up and then right before button turn, you still keep all your speed. Kind of like domino a little bit. This actually is slightly faster, but it is riskier. I don't know what I was trying to go for there. It's kind of hard to get the timing right. But basically you can roll up. Oh my god. I usually try to go for the button press in my runs, but if I miss it, it's like whatever. Because it can save like a second or two. Just try to roll off the V and go in like that. That's a fast finish. And I guess that's the tutorial for Super Monkey Ball 2 Story Mode. That's all there is to it, guys. Um, Real quick, I'm going to go run through practice mode and like look at all the stages again, make sure there was nothing I missed. Like, I hope there wasn't anything I missed. I could have, like, give some good, like, alternate strats for some of the stages. Oh, there was one thing I wanted to do. I wanted to go to the match shuffle and show what you could do if you did the play button. Wow, I actually got a high score. Cool. First place! Wowee! There's only two, two scores in here. <laughs> yeah, sorry we missed the entire like story mode, but... Oh my gosh, that's a lot of play points. Yeah, story mode really glitches out your play point counter. I should save. How many play points was that? Hold on. How many play points was that? That was a lot of play points. Holy! Three million! Oh well, I've put in enough time recording this. I'm gonna go now. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope this helped. If you actually watched it this whole way through, hopefully you're like a pro runner by now at this game. So, I'll probably make a more conveniently available tutorial eventually. And yeah, that's about it. I'll see you guys later.
Alright guys, I'm gonna do, go and uh, do a few things that I missed in the initial video. Probably gotta make these jump cuts, so... Let's go. So, if you like... Let's say you weren't good enough to do the fastest strat, or like you just don't feel comfortable with it. You could also like, I guess kind of try to improvise like an easier way to do it. Like you could do something like this, and do the ending a little slower. Or, you know, let's say for some reason you don't get over this wall right here, and you're like, oh no, now I'm stuck over here. It's still not over. You can actually, well first of all you can do that. Which I'm surprised I made it. But another thing you can actually do, if let's say you don't get over that, so you could always like just kind of improvise. Like it's pretty easy to just kind of roll around in these things and improvise your way around. This is one of definitely the harder levels in this world, but that's not saying very much. So I mean, again, something like this could be like a pretty easy. Or just, uh, maybe not exactly that, but just being able to beat the stage, like, mildly quick, or at a brisk pace, is still better than doing the normal way. So, I mean, or, I mean, obviously dying. So, I mean, that that's uh, something to uh, consider. Now I guess, like, I'm trying to see, could you, could you use the play button here and do something? If you're really quick, you might even be able to just make, oh yeah, dude, you can. Okay, wow, I like didn't even know that until just now. Okay, so I guess if you don't want to do the fastest strat, you could also do this. I did not even think that worked. Yeah, you could make that very easily. Like, okay, you can mess it up still pretty easily, too. But that is not hard to make. Like, all you gotta do is press this button, and then run down there. And you could still make the cycle. So that's, like, something easier you could do if, let's say, you couldn't do this faster strat yet. Not that the faster strat's, like, too hard. Actually, what time do you get if you don't do that? Because it might be roughly the same thing. Okay, it is a little faster to go press that button. So, well, there you go. That's another option. That's kind of cool, actually. I did, like, not even know you could... Hold on, it's, fa it's better if you go back to the left. I didn't even, like, realize. That's actually a pretty uh, solid strat you could do. No, I mean, that's pretty easy. I mean, yeah. Well, that's, yeah, there's a strat you could do if, let's say, you just, um, because the other strat's kind of hard. It can be, so, if you, like, have trouble with that, you could always do this strat, too. It's just, it's just, uh, another option. Okay, wait, yeah, something really, I forgot to even, like, consider. You could, like, just go off the front of this platform. Like, if you're not comfortable doing the strat where you actually get on the wall, you could just go off the front of the platform, but it actually makes this probably about a million times easier. And it loses maybe a second or a little bit more than a second. I'm trying to think, like, maybe if you just do one boost and let go. I know on challenge mode, you can actually, like, hold up and, like, let go, and it's a consistent strat. At least for green goal. Can you do that here? Yeah, actually you can. Well, there you go. You need a consistent way to be a uh, free fall, and you don't want to go on the wall, or it's just, I don't know, it's inconsistent for you. You could do something like that. Wow, that's actually very easy. That's a that's actually a pretty good option.
I guess uh, if you don't, you don't even necessarily have to go over these holes either. You could like, I think an, an older strat people used to use was like try to swivel between these different blocks and come in on that side. And that's certainly like that's a viable strat for sure. And like even if you don't end up making the first cycle, it's not the end of the world either. Like it is like 10 seconds. So it doesn't even really save time either to retry. Like if you pause and retry, it's probably gonna about cut even. But yeah, you can always swerve through those too. And again, if you mess up, tip though, if you actually do mess up, like let's say I'm going through, oh no, I messed up. Uh, go, 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 go. Oh no, I didn't make it. Actually, I did still almost make it. You'd want to stay on this side though, because this block does go down sooner. Just, uh, I mean, that's something you could do. There is even another, like, weird backup I think I looked into one time. Does it involve using some of these blocks? Yeah, it does. You could, like, use one of these blocks and, like, do that. That's actually, yeah, that, that would be a pretty good backup you could try. It doesn't really hurt you either. Like, I doubt you would go for that and die. So, like, yeah, let's say going through maybe I'm doing this method and this method doesn't work out so well for me oh no I didn't make it for some obscure reason okay that's fine let's just get on one of these blocks this one might be too far away but still saved a little bit of time the closer ones are definitely the better option actually yeah let's say we somehow miss it from this side because you can be like still like another two or three seconds after that and then make this. This is actually really easy. That is really easy and that can still save you like three extra seconds over doing the normal cycle. So that's actually really cool. That That's actually really, really, really good. So let's say, for some reason, maybe you're having trouble getting this boost at the beginning. Well, you have a few other options as well. Like that, I mean, sometimes I guess, like, if you do the boost, like, really bad, you know, you might not... It might be a really bad clip, or you might just not make it. You could even, like, just get a later cycle, honestly. I'm trying to think how you could do that. Like, let's say, maybe you, like, waited like that. You could get the next quickest cycle. Yeah, that wouldn't be that hard. <clears throat> you just have to account for that, like... Normally, you would normally just bounce like twice here or whatever, but instead you would only go one time, and then you would get on the other side. Or like, if you really couldn't even do that, you could even press this play button back here and make it even easier. And you could go like now. And then, if you did that, you could just stay on this like path the entire time. Super, super easy, actually. In fact, that's really easy. That is the easiest way of getting past this. Like, even if you, like, for some reason missed that, you could still go. You just have to remember when to switch over to the other side. Because they go in patterns of four, in case you didn't know. Like, as long as you know that they go in patterns of four, and you're like, I can show you right now. Like, this will switch one, two, three, four, and it'll switch. So... 
That's just, that's one thing you could know if you were going to do it the slow way. Obviously, you could do it like this too, and it really would be just fine. I don't see a reason actually why you wouldn't want to at least do it like that, versus maybe just trying to get the boost right. But you know, it's whatever you feel comfortable doing, and you know, whatever you can still do pretty fast. Alright, so maybe these run strats here are like not too easy for you. You can always like come back and like press this button. Well, it would help if you actually press the button, but you know, you can always go back and press that button. And like what you can do with, I guess like I did this earlier, but I didn't actually show, I didn't actually like play through it. I don't know why I keep resetting, I'm sorry about that. I just, uh, you press this button. It's a pretty easy way to do it. If you just sit here, it'll already like take you this far, and all you gotta do is just maneuver over here and bam, get the goal. Like it's, it's obviously a lot slower, but it is a very safe and easy way of getting it. If uh, for some reason you weren't comfortable doing the normal strat, like uh, versus, because I mean, you ever try to sit on these platforms? Look how crazy it gets. Like, it's insane. You can't... Well, maybe you can. But regardless, <laughs> you really can't. It, it's a lot easier to just do this. Like, if you need to do that for the time being, it is just a kind of easy way to beat the stage, but it is very slow. Would not recommend. I would recommend just learning the actual, like, fastest strat and getting that down to the point where you're comfortable with it and you can do it every time. That is, uh, that's the optimal solution. And if for some reason, like, you don't want to use the pause frames for whatever reason, or you just feel like you can't use the pause frames, there is always the normal strat. It's just really slow, like, there's no reason to actually do this. But in case you ever wanted to, there's, I, I think they're actually, let's see, if you go to the side like I'm doing right now, you can actually, like, get a... You can do a cycle faster than just going through the middle like normal. Yeah, you can get a 24 instead of a 16. Because normally if you just go straight through the middle, you will get a 16. It is so slow. But compare that 24 to like the 49 or 50 or 51 that you'll get with the pause frame. And like that pretty much tells you why. You probably should just use the pause frame. It's just, it's so much better. I don't, I don't. I just don't know why anyone like if you let's say you really just couldn't do the pause frame. You always could do like that, or just go straight through the middle. Simple enough, you know. It, it's not too bad.